Hi. It's either stream 101 or it's stream 5, depending on if you're looking at it in decimal or binary. How are you guys doing today? Really, really quick. Or cap, recap, whatever you want to call it. I'm working on a game. It's not yet playable. It's going to be a multiplayer game. So I'm working on the server backend for it. That's the wrong picture. That's the right picture. So in my game, you'll be playing it in uh, your web browser. It's going to connect to my server cluster. Each server in the cluster is running its own copy of the game. They talk to each other, and we use a consensus algorithm called Raft to replicate the state and do all the cool things that we need to do. So I'm working today to uh, get to the state where I can add and remove a server while the whole thing is running, which is quite a, quite a challenge. It's been a complicated procedure, but I'm getting close to finishing it, I think. And in the process, uh, adding this helped uh, fill in a lot of the details we'll need for other things, like having it start up with the um, persistent state so it picks up where it leaves off the previous time, and handling crashes and other, other things. So, if you're interested in what the game is about, I really liked playing the Ultima series when I was growing up. So my goal is to try to make a multiplayer game in, in that genre. So retro 2D pixel art, and then just try to do a lot of things that you'd expect to have in a multiplayer game, especially one which is exploration and sandbox style. I just wanted to try to attract different people to try to play the game, give me ideas on how to improve it, and see, see what we can make of it. So I keep a uh, plan and notes for every day I stream. So today's notes are here. And I think I'm pretty close to getting server reconfiguration going. So I kind of broken up my task today into two parts to try to get it to work. And by work, I mean that I can add a server or remove a server. And it that's the minimum. That's not good enough for production though because we have to handle all the I don't know if we want to call them corner cases or actually that's weird why did it do that anyway corner cases or basically just um making it work more robustly so for example if it's midway through adding a server and something goes wrong that's a corner case we need to handle all the cases that could go wrong reasonably at least and oh yeah, let's 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 take a let's take a shot at it. So just to see where I stand now, uh, I have some commands here uh, if I'm in the right directory to um, nuke the old cluster, stage and serve the new cluster. Oh, actually, while I'm at it, I ought to get uh, another shell going. I have an admin console, but it takes a little bit of time to start up. Um, this is a, maybe a bit too chatty. Let me turn down the, the messaging level. I had it turned up because I wanted to see a lot more detail about what was going on. But we can turn it back down right now. So... Three. Stage. Serve. All right, and the admin console should be starting up. The admin console isn't much to look at. I uh, probably need to put some attention into the style sheet. I had some suggestions from viewers for some CSS packages I can just um, just put in there to start with to make it look nicer. But anyway, the uh, cluster, the way it operates is there's a startup server called the orchestrator. It doesn't do much other than start and restart and stop the actual game servers as needed. So it's starting up three game servers and basically showing us all the uh, diagnostic messages from all of them. So th the, this would be a diagnostic message from server 10. And the, the, I, I started from 10 just so that it people that I don't get confused about it being a, an index. These are unique identifiers. So like if we were to add a new server later, like if we remove 10 and added a new one, the new one can't be 10 unless it is exactly the same configuration. 
So I, I don't plan to reuse instance numbers. If I move things around, they'll just always get new instance numbers. Anyway, the cluster starts up. They connect. It all connects to each other. And then part of the raft algorithm that you um, do first is you have to pick a leader. So one server is elected a leader. There's a procedure to do that. I implemented that in previous streams. So you can see here, server 10 became the leader. And there's a term number, which increments every time we um, we have a new election in the cluster. So since I, wrote, I ran this two times, the first time, 10 was the leader. And then when everything got shut down and restarted, they reset and start a new election. So that's why we're in term two. So some information here is persistent, like the term number and like who we voted for um, for each server. And I can actually, let's get another shell to look at that stuff. Mm, so if I just do cat raft, so we can see this is what's stored on disk for the raft algorithm right now, what term we're in, which server we voted for, and whether or not we voted in this term. So pretty simple stuff. So here's the admin console. So with this, I can kind of adjust the log threshold all the way down so we can see that it's actually pinging the leaders in the cluster just to let them know it's alive still so it maintains leadership. And then um, here's the case where we're adding a, a server. So I had two configuration files. The one we start with has three. Hey there, Kankomatics. And then here's a new config, which has four. So we added a server 13. So what I what I did before, I can I have it so you can either drop or click here and pick a new file for the config. And uh, as soon as we hit upload, it's going to try to send it to the cluster. And see, it will trigger a change in raft to go from the old cluster config to the new one. And if we look at the clusters log, this is as far as we're getting now. I'll stop everything right now to see. We see that all three servers acknowledge that we're changing the cluster config. And then the orchestrator starts the new server, but the new server is dying because of one of the tests I need to do today, which is the new server needs to know that it's coming up in a state where we're transitioning from configuration. It won't find its own config in the first set. It will find it in the second set. Right now, it's only looking in the first set and not finding its own config and then just dying. So we need to fix that. What is working is uh, the other direction, or m working more. So if I nuke that and then serve a new one, and then if I go in the new config here and I go the other way, like removing 12, this should work a little bit better. So we'll, we'll upload that one. Upload. So we can see it started to change. And then this applying joint configuration means all servers were ready to switch. And so it actually did it. And once it completes that, it, trans it goes to a single configuration. So the reason why we have this intermediate stage of joint configuration, it's explained in the Raft algorithms um, white paper or the PhD thesis that Diego, who invented this algorithm, came up with. But it's basically there as a temporary step to ensure safety along the way. Like at any point, any server could crash and come back up and figure out that we're in the middle of a change and we won't um, have any kind of corner case where we might have two leaders or no leader or anything like that. So it ensures uh, safety during the transition. So there are a couple things that aren't done correctly here, I think. Um, and it's kind of hard to see. I think if I looked at the actual state files running, we'll, I can sort of see what's going on. Oh, right. Uh, it's sort of a corner case, so maybe it doesn't count. So maybe removing a server works, but there is a corner case where we, um, we're in, we're in term one. And if I were to stop the cluster right now and then restart it, it wouldn't reapply this configuration set and so it might get confused and think it's in the old one. Hey there, Rally Monkey. How does it feel to have my own emotes? Well, it's just me waving um, and I only get one. Do I feel immortalized? No, not really. Just kind of a fun little thing. I like have my own little version of the wave. Thanks to playing with scissors, by the way. 
Yeah, that's what the journal looks like. It's just a sequence of lines, which are JSON objects right now, which each one is representing two different things. It is for Raft, it is a log entry, which has a turn number in it. And then for the server overall, it has a command. So for example, this command to finish reconfiguration and this one to start the configuration. And then these ones in the middle are um, to, uh, these are Raft specific to, to uh, start joint configuration and start single so yeah it's pretty pretty cool i guess yeah like we can say that removing a server is working so i'm working today to get add add a server to work and i believe that the uh the only thing standing in the way really so these are really more corner cases actually or like maybe i should call them clean up so clean up uh, yeah, so uh, we can see this right now if I were to look at the uh, configuration file here and I tell it to format it. Uh, no, not this one. The one in the orchestrator. Or no, it's when we add a server, right? Actually, I'm not quite sure. Uh, I think it's when we add a server. It will... Um, we were seeing it at some point where it was just not truncating the file correctly. We had had like extra junk at the end. I don't quite remember where where I saw that. But yeah, anyway, there's some cleanup stuff to do. So this is one of those. This one we have to do because right now, if, watch what happens if I stop the cluster and restart it. The orchestrator didn't update its configuration file, so it actually launches 12, which isn't in the set. And then um, 12, I don't think, starts correctly because it's it doesn't, it, the other servers don't acknowledge it. So yeah, we have this happen where, um, I think, I th okay, if I reduce the log message, we would see like, I think it's server 12 is constantly, um, constantly starting a new election because it's 10 and 11 aren't talking to it anymore. So anyway, the problem is we don't want the orchestrator to keep launching the old server. The, old, the orchestrator needs to update its own config, right? And so that's more clean up than anything. And this as well. We need this because... Yeah, actually this, yeah. We need to include the index of the log that up, that applied the configuration file in the config file because if we replay the log to find out if the config file was being changed we don't want to reapply commands that are old so that's clean up as well so where was it where i had uh all right so yeah this is the only one this is uh adding a server yeah, I know there's chat. Hold on a second. So to get add a server to work, we need to do this. Forgot to ask, what inspired the name you have for that particular server? A Kendanol? It was just a random name. I'm not very good with names, so I just picked a, I just wrote, you know, random string of characters that kind of formed a word. I just needed a, some kind of placeholder. So there's no rhyme or reason. Okay, so... The, way, the reason adding a server doesn't work now is the server comes up and it can't find its own port numbers because it's looking at only the current configuration. During a transition, it will only be in the next configuration, not in the current. So we have to update the code for that. So let's do that. So in the Realm server tests, server tests, uh, coordinator tests. Let's add a case for start for new server and joint config configuration. And that'll maybe steal from one of these old ones here. Actually, all we need, all we really need to do is check check that the that the uh, mock webgate got the correct port numbers. So like this stuff here, that the, one of these early steps that we did was to make sure the webgate was told what port numbers. So let's do this, but instead of 
mobilizing with uh, index zero with only a, a single config. Let's set up a joint config and have it um, be a new server, so to speak. No rhyme or reason. That's right. <laughs> that's not a bad joke. That's a clever. That's a clever pun. Is that what you call it? So for those who don't know, I use the gaming handle or Twitch handle Rymu because first for the first year when I was playing World of Warcraft, I really didn't care to to pick my own character names. I let the World of Warcraft name generator just I just kept hitting refresh until I got one that was okay. And uh I think Rymu was one of the auto generated names. I'm like, oh that's a short name and I thought it was an uh easy to say word and then I found out later most people don't know actually how to say it. A lot of people say rhyme you or they say rim you or or they look at it and they're like how do I say that word? One of those things I kind of regret. I should pick a... I'm not very good at picking names. I wish I was better at picking names. I could pick one that um, is easy for everyone to pronounce. pronounce. So the arrange here has got to be a little bit special. We have to set up two configs. I'm going to go to where I have the setup for this whole test suite and uh, kind of pick out, there's the setup, pick out this configuration and I'm going to, uh, how does this work? How did that work? Can we set a joint config in this? Oh, we can't. Um, how does the coordinator get its next configuration? Will that be through the log? No, when it first starts out... Okay, yeah, when it first starts out, it's only going to read the current config, which won't be in there. Like, maybe, I guess, we want a special mode where it starts up, can't find its own config, and maybe it sits there idle until... No, it should process its journal, right? No, 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 no. Let me think about this. I guess, wouldn't it start up and just only receive connections and not send ones out? No, we have to bootstrap it somehow. I guess this will be a special case. If it can't find its own config, it will go to the next config file and look for that. I've been working in the games industry. Not in the games industry. I was working in R&D at uh, Qualcomm for a long, long time. And so I would do uh, demo apps and prototyping. And so some stuff I did like voice over IP and um, MPEG-4, MPEG-H, you know, multimedia technology. A lot of the demo apps we would do either did a lot of real-time stuff or networking. So I've, I've done a ton of... Uh, little apps that either would send and receive messages or encode or decode audio or video or both. So this uh, server-side stuff for, a, for setting up a multiplayer game is more like approachable for me. Um, it's my way of easing myself into trying to make a game. When I actually have a server running and then I'm going to try to make a game about it, it's going to be a little bit more nervous for me. I'll know very li very little about gaming. So what I've been actually doing is... Uh, when I'm not streaming, I watch other game dev streamers to try to pick up, uh, pick up tidbits and ideas on, you know, what tools they use and what methodologies they follow through, and what are the what are the important points and aspects to make it make the coding different than what I'm used to. So, for example, I figured out a lot of people use a sprite for pixel art, so um, I've been you know, getting in touch with the community there. And for game design, I've gotten a lot of links from uh, game devs on like how to design levels, um, how to do pathfinding, other things like that. So I hope to uh, make a good attempt based off what I'm learning from other streamers and then based off of the foundation I have, which is all in networking and multimedia and just general like app development. Okay, so I'm hoping this is okay, that we'll, this is a special case. We'll just write our own config. So we'll take this, 
and just write it directly to a file during the setup here. Actually, um, what if I just get the config? So auto next config is just to get the current config. Come on, IntelliSense. There we go. We get the current config and then modify it to add a um, another server. So that's realms. So here I don't use a kendanol. I use a foo because it's in a test. Foo is a traditional like name like foo and bar and spam. Traditional little words, nonsense words you use for um, when uh, you just need a word in a test. So servers dot add, and then we can just add the new server to it. So if the old server was this, we can cut all this stuff out. Then the new server would be just we need another ID like I don't know nine. <laughs> it doesn't matter. As long as it's unique and then we'll make sure it has port numbers it's a little uh, random tidbit networking experience you might wonder like why let me expand this why do i not use the odd numbers for ports so it's sort of a convention sort of an informal convention or may maybe it's formalized somewhere that when you are making a, a service on, with networking, you um, you allocate them in pairs. So an example would be RTP, real-time protocol for sending and receiving voice and audio. You um, you you use one port for the the main multi media, and then you reserve the next port, like the odd number, for the control. So RTCP protocol. Another another reason you have pairs is you might have the odd one for a reverse direction if it's um if each port is just unidirectional so it's kind of a i just kind of got into this habit of not of leaving space at least for the odd numbered port in case i need it in this case i'll probably never need it and then why do we add 80 and what does 80 begin with 80 is the well-known port number for the web http and it's sort of just a convention i think to make it 80 80 if it's um, an internal web port so just random tidbits Starting in the game building arena after years of yeah, so you're pretty much doing what I what I'm what I'm doing. Building the engine is much more comfortable. Yeah, so I um before I was streamed on Twitch, I was trying to make my own game engine, and I got pretty far into it, and it was more comfortable doing it. But then when I went to like, how do I make a game out of it? Just the creative part, the creative muscle I have is very weak. So, uh, what I ended up doing is just uh, trying to I just tried to clone someone else's game. So I picked Minecraft because Minecraft's graphics are actually pretty simple. If you you only need to do a little introductory self teaching for like OpenGL or Direct 3D or something like that, and you can actually get something to look like Minecraft. Right? It's all cubes. It's very easy to model. And so that was more approachable to me. So I made my own little internal Minecraft clone. It got pretty far. But yeah, the creative aspect and like a more advanced, uh, the game stuff is yeah, definitely a challenge. Cool, yeah. Let me, let, let us all know when you start streaming. I'd like to see that. How big of an undertaking is to build a game? It depends on the scope of the game, right? So what I'm gonna, do, what I'm doing for my stream is I don't have a game fleshed out yet i want to see if i can actually make a game with my viewers feedback help by so i'll set up something that basically there is no universe i'll I'll make it so we can create one and then i'll just sort of like what do you guys want me to do you want, want me to make um a dungeon or oh, uh, like a town you know something like that see where it leads me if if that doesn't really work out i had some I some story ideas some story arc ideas i thought i might try to uh, help drive me the with the creative aspect. We'll see how it goes. Yeah, the, the challenges for me are going to be on the game and creative side, I think. This technical work is not that challenging to me because it's it's what I've been doing for a long, long time. It's just kind of, there's there's a lot of it. It's going to take a long time. Yeah, there you go. Twitch chat is a great hive mind. And the cool thing for you guys is uh, if this ever takes off, you're automatically like premium free uh super players right 
So you'll have special access, you won't have to pay. There'll be a lot of benefits. So that's my idea. But just to be realistic, not, what is it, 95% of all first-time indie ge game studios fail? So I'm not, I'm not like expecting to succeed. I'm expecting to learn. And if it succeeds, that's great. But if it doesn't succeed, if we, you know, we always f learn best for, for, from our failures. And um, I'll, I'll learn a lot. I'll learn a lot either way, I hope. So, okay, so. Back to this test. We're adding a new server. I need to actually save that config. I've been doing this here and there, so I'm just, oh, there we go. It was already selected. Make it, make it help, grab a helper function from another test framework, which um, I will use here. Let's just paste it here. Whoops, copy, paste. Yeah, that's exactly what I want. Only it uses a file utility. I need to include that. All right. And then, so now we have it in JSON, we can use that utility to write it to a file. I just need to set up a file. I uh, will call it next config file, and that is, you just need to construct it with the path. So I have another utility to get me the the parent directory of the executable run, or running in, and uh, this is important, the name. Uh, it has to match what I'm using in the executor. Uh, there we go. New config JSON. It has to match up there because once the game is up and running, the executor takes over the ownership of that file. We're just this, we're using this as a bootstrapping method. So next config file, next config. So here's what we expect. This, if we tell it three, and it'll look in the configuration and see there is no in th index three, there's only zero, one, and two. It should go into a special mode where it l opens this file to see if there is an index three. It'll say, yes, there is one. I must be a new server that's joining as a non-voting member. This is a very special case. It should join the cluster, but not raise elections or vote. It's just there to receive the uh, replicated log. Once it does, the leader of the cluster is gonna say, okay, now, we are um, in joint, uh, we're moving to single configuration, so now you can vote. I think that's how it works. Oh no, there's a, there's a third step. Yeah, first we bring him in as a non-voting member. Then we confirm that we're in joint config, which lets them vote. Then we go to single config where we can remove old servers. If you're curious about that, um, Diego Angaro, I think his last name is, invented this algorithm called Raft. And I'm going to pull up the white paper just to show you guys the um, cool little diagram in there for this reconfiguration stuff. So it looks like this. C old is the old cluster configuration. So, for example, it might be 10, 11, 12. And then new is, when, let's say we're adding a server. So 10, 11, 12, 13. C old new is called a joint configuration where you have the two sets both in the both separate but active. They can overlap. So in this case of adding a server, C new is a superset and C old is a subset. But you you have a temporary time where you have to have like separate voting majorities and uh, separate configuration sets active at the same time as a safe way to transition between old and new, just in case old and new are radically different. If you didn't have this, and let's say old was 10, 11, 12, and new was 13, 14, 15, then it's basically impossible to safely transition because the sets don't intersect at all, so you can't have a leader during the transition. You know, you'd have to, the old leader would have to step down before the new leader came in, it, so you, you, that wouldn't work. So you have this intermediate part where you could ha have a leader from either set that handles the transition. There's probably a good uh, political analogy for that, but I can't come up with any. Um, so the corner case I'm, or the, uh, the, the case I'm handling right now is where C, where the server in C new wasn't in old, and so it boots up and it's like, well, what port number do I need to bind? It needs to know that in order to actually receive messages from the old leader. So it's sort of a bootstrapping process. It will, um, 
It'll know what the other servers in the cluster are from the normal config, but it won't know what port numbers it should use. Oh, so hopefully, hopefully all that makes sense. If it doesn't, you guys let me know and I'll answer, try to answer any questions you have. So the, the, to, to make sure it works, we need to make sure that it correctly identifies its public port and private port. Those are the only really ones I care about. And I don't care about any of these other things, actually. I will look for, actually, I'm going to look for these numbers specifically. So configuration, public port, right? They might ask, what is a web gate? What is the coordinator? Let me answer that in a second. Just let me finish this thought. So here's the here's the test. So first things first, what am I what am I coding uh, right now? It's a unit test. I like to use the Google Test Framework and develop components, software components using test driven development, which means you write a test first. It the test is describing some kind of use case or condition or bug, and you make sure it compiles first. Then you run it and you expect it to fail because you haven't done the work to make to implement the feature or fix the bug. So the test then is a measure to see if you've done the work. You go back and you do the work, run the test again. If the test passes, then you just did the work and it's validated. And then it goes uh, into a suite of tests that you keep running from then on to make sure that nothing breaks. So um, what is a web gate? If you had that question, it goes into the uh, how the game, game server is internally organized. So again, each server is a copy of the game. They talk to each other to replicate their state. So inside each one of these are a bunch of components. The outermost one is a web server. WebGate is sort of collecting together different copies of the server because we have different ports. We have these private ports and public ports. And so it's pretty thin. It's just a, a a collector of web server ports, and then they all go and feed into this coordinator, which is the component that's sending and receiving messages between servers, and kind of figuring out what where uh, what other internal components should care about what messages. Raft is the algorithm for consensus. So when the uh, coordinator receives a message from another server that says, "Hey, I need to I need to tell your Raft implementation about something," it'll forward it on to there. Raft, the Raft algorithm, if you read about it, depends on the state of the server being sequentialized as a, a sequence of commands to change the state, and this journal component is implementing that. And the only commands we have right now are, there's one to start reconfiguration, another one to finish it, and then during the reconfiguration, there's a command to apply a joint consensus, and then a single consensus. So there's four different commands. The executor takes commands, and if um, if they apply to the game state, it will write. And so right now, it all all it does is it writes configuration files uh, during a start and finish con reconfiguration. I don't have any of the actual game state yet. And then yeah, so we're later we'll be adding game state and a reconciler, whose job is to take requests from clients. Like you you might be in the game, you might say, uh, move to move west one square. The reconciler will say, okay. That translates to set position of player foobar to 15, x equals 15, y equals 12. And that goes back to the coordinator, which then sends it to Raft to apply it to the journal. When it gets um, committed in the journal, meaning the Raft has said oh, the majority of servers in the cluster have replicated it, so it's basically safe to continue. The executor takes that and it'll apply it to um, set the position of the player in the, in the, in the world. So... All of this happens hopefully very fast so that as a client, you hit the left button, your character moves left, and you don't have to know that we had to replicate, we had to validate the command, we had to construct a, a state change command out of that request, and then replicate it through the, the cluster, and then execute it as a state change. All that stuff is the backend stuff, which I find really fun that I'm doing now. You as a player will, will not see that, you'll see a game. <laughs> All right, so now I have this test assembled. I can build it and verify that it fails. That's the first step. Um, I missed something. What did I miss here? Oh, I made a new test, but I didn't give it a name. 
Mobilize primary is the name of the test I copied from. I need to make a name here that reflects what is the use case. So this is new server being added to cluster. Well, verify new server being added to cluster knows its own port numbers, right? Now it should build. It didn't, <laughs> missing something else. It's that kind of day, I guess. Here's here's one thing you might run into when C, writing C++. If you use macros or templates, a lot of times the first error message will not be in your code, but it'll be in the code that defined the macro or the template. And you kind of have to get trained, you have to train yourself and or learn from trial and error that you kind of want to skip down until you see the first line that's your code. So here's my code. And then look at that line and, and usually uh, you can figure out what's going on. So based off of the types of things, I think, yeah, so this, it's going to yield a JSON value. And JSON value is not immediately convertible to that because that could be an integer or it could be an unsigned integer. So it's an it's a ambiguous call, which probably this says. Right, so it could be that. It could be int or this other one that has an int. It probably says here somewhere it could it's ambiguous. Right. Operator equals equals is ambiguous. So to disambiguate it, I just simply do a typecast, which says, yes, we want the int version of that conversion from JSON value. This JSON value, uh, how do I show that? J mm. Excuse me, this JSON value is a class I wrote on stream a while ago. If you're interested in anything like what I did in the past for uh, some of these components I'm reusing, my notebook's all public, so you can go to my notebook and just scan through and like, for example, for the JSON, I did that in stream 21. If you wanted to actually see me do it, whoops, I mistyped that. You can go to my YouTube channel. I export all of my streams to YouTube after at least a day of a wait period. And um, so you could find stream 21 and watch me write this JSON value class if you really wanted to. Um, there's some more popular stream, um, videos and some, a lot of them that are not popular, but it's for you guys. All right, so this hopefully compiles now. So some extensions I use in Visual Studio to explain this. I've been using this test explorer with another one that uh, auto locates my unit tests for me. That's what that spinny thing is doing. And then I can just hit that button and it runs all my unit tests to give me a red green indicators. So as I expected, the test I added is the one that's failing here. And it'll tell me, basically, it expected 80, 88, and it got zero. Basically, it didn't get configured. So let's fix it. It's testing coordinator. So coordinator is here. And it's when it is mobilized. So a lot of things we do in mobilize this code, I need to refactor. Whenever code gets kind of complicated like this, it's a sign for me to um, refactor, which is to um, clean it up and make it, uh, break it up into smaller functions to make it more human readable. I'm still trying to train myself to do that. My viewers sometimes help me out by saying, what is this code? It looks really uh, badly written or it looks hard to read. And it's like, okay, it's a sign to me and I need to remember to come back here and refactor. Right, so here, when it gets down to here, it's configuring the web gate by looking in this realm config, which it gets from realms config, which it gets from the cached configuration, which it gets from the current configuration file. So here we need to, I think we need to do a check. We need to, we need to do a check where if this is not valid yet, it's got to go into this special case where we are um, a new server. So let's see. Something like this, if impl shared cache configuration get type equals JSON value type invalid. And here's a special condition, right? Let's make a, spe let's make a function so we don't dirty this function anymore. We'll say impl um, 
load next configuration. I think I actually had space for the next configuration already. Maybe not. Hmm. We only really need it for our own... Um, to find this one, right? So I could do something like this. Um, actually, it couldn't be even easier. I can turn that, I can put that there, make it not constant, and I can say if this is invalid, then we'll, do, we'll load it. Load realms configuration. Ro yeah, ro load next realms configuration. So basically it'll pick up from the new config the things it needs here. And then in here I need to use um oh wait a minute, hold on. I think it's safe to use that for now. Hold on, this wasn't the case hold on, I got I'm getting confused. This isn't it's not that this is invalid, it's that the, realm, the singular realm config is invalid. Yeah, okay, I got this wrong. This should be const over, after all. That's auto, and it's if it can't find its own realm. Then load it from the next, and we need to give it the... Um... Oh, I'm, I'm wrong again. It's the instance, isn't it? Instance config. Because we need to tell it the uh, instance index. Right. So the, the only thing I expect to be possibly missing from this cache configuration is the instance config, which is the new instance. Which is what the test is saying. We're adding a new instance. Everything else we use in cache configuration. I think it's safe right now for the moment to bootstrap from the old config. Let's make that function. Here's the impulse, so where should I put it? Let's put it at the top, why not? We're going to return a JSON value. And it's going to take an instance index. Or is it, yeah, it's an instance index, right? Yes. And that is a size T, I think, yes. Okay. Load and return the instance configuration from the next configuration file. The game configuration, the new, the game configuration that will apply once the current reconfiguration pr process is complete. Yes. Instance index. This is the inst the index of the instance configuration in the array of, conf of in configurations for for the realm that we're in. Actually, I need to check. Does it know the realm we're in from parameter? What's this realm? Ah, uh, we need to pass that in too. I don't really. Li I have this ruler here because I really don't like lines going beyond there. And when that happens, what I'll do is the first place that uh, I feel comfortable breaking a line, I break it. And if I have to break function parameters, I'll put each one in a different line. Just a silly little convention I'm used to. So it needs to know the realm name. So for example, I'll do the same thing here. You don't have to do this in C++, it's just a preference thing. You don't have to do anything in particular in C++, other than make sure that it, the compiler accepts it, right? 
Uh, wait a minute. That's not what I wanted. I wanted to copy the documentation for that. Yes. Put it there. All right. I think we'll just, uh, this is a special case, special case. The coordinator used to read files directly, but now it uses the, uh, configuration object. Actually, I'm wondering, maybe the configuration, the configuration object should do this work for us. Here's the configuration object. Actually, it doesn't even do the work. It is, it is set, and then you can get it later, and the real work is done by the executor. Which does, which is where I copied this code from. Maybe the executor should be doing this. Let let me put that on my notes as something to consider. So try to do this so I don't forget. Consider moving next configuration reading from coordinator to executor. probably what it, where it should go but I just want to get it to work so to get it to work part would be to uh, copy the contents of this and just paste it for now into the coordinator so we need to make a file might be wondering why I use my own file wrapper it's mostly because I have uh, convenience functions in there that, that I like to use like reading the whole file into an and this buffer is just a type def for vector of 8-bit integers, uh, bytes in other words, and um, mostly it's because I like this, the wrappers I made, but um, other times I'll use the system abstractions library I wrote it, uh, would be if, if the API I'm using might be different between Windows, Linux, and Mac, I try to abstract away the difference, which is why it's called system abstractions. Um, that's why you might see these weird classes instead of like what you might be familiar with, like f open or uh, socket and bind to do sockets, like with the uh, windsock or whatever. I, I use my own wrappers to um, let me write code that's cross-platform. So file is going to be we're going to we're again going to hard code the name just like the test is doing. And I can actually cheat and just steal from the test. All right, so if we can't open it, then sorry, we tried our best. We If we can't read it, it's sorry, we tried our best. And then we return the value. Actually, no, there's a better way to do this. I can um, call this amount red and then compare and then close and then compare it. I can close. And then I can just return this directly. I don't need to have this value thing. And then also we make sure the file is closed. It's actually, that might be a bug in the executor. It is, right? We open the file. We might return early here. It didn't close it. Let me um, fix executor bug in not closing a file if read fails a reminder to go back and fix that i try to stay on track and um come back to it later when i'm done with the current task which i can do because i am doing unit testing so when i'm doing testing it's one thing at a time i'll be testing this code and this is not being tested so it's kind of a nice thing if if your tests test everything at once, then you kind of might be stuck uh, and um, not able to fix just one thing. You might have to go fix everything before you can get your test to run. All right, so read it, and then we are not just going to... Actually, hold on. It's not just that. We're going to dereference servers, and that's in what? Realms? With the realm, and then instance index. So you might wonder what happens if we go out of range. Well, the cool thing I added to this JSON value indexer is if you go out of range, it just returns you a, a placeholder item, that, a value that's null, or not null, it's um, invalid. So it's safe to do it. You just get an invalid configuration, and then 
if you try to do anything with an invalid configuration, like look up these things, they just return zero, which is why the test was returning zero before. It was because this was invalid. This um, that that port was just never set. So let's try this. This ought to get around it, right? Oh, wait a minute. Four fifty-seven. Oh, is it because that this is a reference? Probably. Yeah. Yeah, once you assign a reference, you can't reassign it. To do so would be to um, mo uh, modify what you um, are getting a reference to, which we don't want to do. So that's a good uh, check, safety check there. So, this, so without a reference, it's going to make a copy and overwrite the copy if the first copy was invalid. I could have a check here, like if it's still invalid, we do something. But I think it's actually safe because this will just reject it and it will return false at that point, which is yeah, good enough of a check. Anyway, we can go now rerun this test. Just hit this button. Still failing. So when we can um, put a breakpoint there and hit this bug button to see it. And then step through and see what's going on. Okay, it is n not invalid. It's null. Ooh. I didn't know I did that. Is that that's a problem with my indexer, I think. Uh let me look. I thought my JSON value indexer returned invalid. It went out of range, but maybe it's returning null. Oh yeah, look, it's returning null. Um, hmm. Actually, I guess that does make sense. I don't, I don't know enough about JavaScript if that's what happens in JavaScript. If you index a JavaScript array out of range, does it return null? Or is it uh, the equivalent of a, of a invalid would be like throw an exception or something? I don't, well, okay, for now, let's just go with it. So it will be null. Well, okay, there's a quicker way. I had a conversion to null pointer. Which might look a little weird because it's not a pointer. Um, what is happening is null pointer gets promoted to a null JSON value. Okay, run that test again. Yay! Green is good. So, let me see what happens to the actual code if I stage it again now. So w nuke stage and serve the cluster. And then we're gonna go to the admin console and um let's load the one that we're adding where we're adding a server. Oh I didn't I don't have it prepared. I am not prepared. I need to take I need to go into this file and undo my last change. Okay, I don't have the last change in the undo history, so I got a copy from the new config. And we'll make ID 13. We'll fill in some port numbers here. Sound good, right? Okay, so admin console. We're going to insert it here again. Uh, make sure that if I see 13 in there, I know that the admin console is using the new config. So to make the cluster use the new config, I'm going to look at log level 2. We'll do upload. There we go. Actually, okay, it didn't work. <laughs> what happened? Oh, that's unexpected. The, uh, or, the uh, orchestrator crashed. Huh. I didn't expect that at all. So, if I serve again, 
it will um basically pick up those those orphaned um those orphan servers and then we'll just nuke everything and try again let me see if it happens a second time if it does then i can i can run the orchestrator and the debugger and see what's going on no a different behavior so i have like a hmm interesting that that's one of those bugs i hate to follow if you can't reproduce the bug Okay, so server 13 is not loading correctly still. Um, but we can look and see, is the new config being written? Did I, I might have forgetten, forgotten to do that. That's in the, okay, where are you? Where's the build folder? Here's the build folder. Orchestrator, and then here are the realms. So here's 13. So there is a new config. In the original config. Hmm. Should have started up and bound that, but it didn't. I'm trying to think, how would I debug this? It's difficult to debug because I'm not starting it in the debugger. I'm starting the orchestrator. I could, st oh, wait a minute. I could start the new server in the debugger. Yeah, what am I thinking? The files are all set up there, so I can just launch it and it should run. In fact, that's what I was doing yesterday. Let me see what happens. Uh, yeah, in fact, I still have that um, breakpoint. Let's do this. So it starts up. Hold on, let me check something. Let me make sure the launch config. Yeah, it, it tells us to use index 3. Right, good. So can we're going to run. Okay, here's the, here's the, um, no, that's not it. Start the journal, mobilize the executor. I wonder if, no, this should, that should have been, oh, wait a minute, hold on, maybe that is the problem. Oh, it's also using the instance number for that? Why, why do we need that? For the host name. Oh, yeah. Shoot, okay. So this is one level above the coordinator. This is the integration layer. So the integration layer also wants to find out another piece of information from there. So the coordinator th needs these two. The upper level needs that one. Why do we need the host? Oh, for the SSL certificate. All right. Maybe because this could be running on any server. It has to figure out what server it's running on to pick the correct um, key and certificate files. Shoot. Okay, well, I guess we'll do the same thing at this layer. So, a crude thing would be, um, hmm. actually, the, if it's getting it from configuration, it makes me think what I was going to do before, have the configuration hold the um, next in it, might be the way to go. And it wouldn't be that hard, but I have to change, I have to change the executor and I got to change the configuration object. I, I need to take a short break, like a minute or two. I'll be right back.
Hello. I am back. All right, so what's maybe first? Configuration might be an easier one to change first. So we're going to add a new requirement. Get next. And set next. That's a, uh, I don't need to unsubscribe. Don't need to subscribe. Don't need to unsubscribe. Get next. Set next. So what do we expect? There's initial settings. Oh yeah, Riley Monkey was sick when I wrote this. And we were asking him to uh, get well. <laughs> so what? Maybe the next? Will be that he got well. Hopefully he's well. And... Uh, The setup will be, yeah. So yeah, you can do this kind of trick with tests. You can have one method be used to test another um, because the only requirement is that what you set, you can get. And then when you can set again, you can change it. So you might like wonder why am I um, using it to test itself? It's, it's fair. <laughs> Set, the get next will be next settings. Set next, we need to put something different in here. Status, how about very well. Set next. Let's make sure that this doesn't modify the um, initial settings. And, but the new settings are in the, are in the next now. Yeah, okay. So to make that compile, I have to add the next to the API. So that's configuration. We need a, a get and set next. Return the, just, I don't want to call it next here. Um, return the settings that Will will be applied. Uh, once the cluster hmm. I don't know how to end the sentence. Return the settings that will be applied. How about this return the settings? Um, to which the cluster is currently transitioning. Yeah. We will say that in all the places. So there's one place. There's that place. All right. Okay, so uh, it's defined. Now we need to actually give the definition. So it's in configuration. So again here. This part's actually kind of easy because we just say next, oops, say next settings in a couple places. And we do not need to uh, do the subscriber announcements. I don't think, I don't think it's important. We just store it for u for use later. Well, actually, hold on. What is the... I guess it's actually safe to do that. Maybe I should, um, I should even uh, put that into some kind of helper function since it's replicated here. Yeah, let's do that. So here are properties and here are some methods. And then we'll say publish ch unchanged. That's what it's called, right? Unchanged. Unchange. And it needs the uh, reference to the uh, 
to the a unique lock of uh, the type of the mutex that we have. Where is the mutex? It's in shared. I don't know if I can get away with this. Let's see. No. Um, we pro probably just need to say it. Standard mutex. Is that what it is? Yeah. I like to use decal type where I can. Actually, it still doesn't like it. Oh, is it because it's a void? Was missing? Ah, so we can say that. That's great. Call all subscribed on change delegates to inform, to publish the fact. This is the publish subscribe model, by the way. To publish the fact that the configuration was changed. And then it has an input output parameter lock. This is the the object being used to hold the shared properties mutex. Note. The shared properties mutex well hold on. Do we need to assume that it was Actually, we do have to say this, right? The, su the shared properties mutex is assumed to be locked on entry. It is unlocked on exit. Sort of like pre and post conditions. I'm not going to get too strict about it because I really I, all I want to do is take this code out and call impl publish on change in two places, right? And just paste it there. And then now since it's inside the impl, we can remove the impl. And we just unlock. We assume it was locked on entry. We unlock it so that we can do that because I have a general rule, which is do not call callbacks while holding a lock because that's led me down the dangerous path of having too many deadlocks in my code. So far, so good with this new rule of do not hold locks when you make callback calls, as long as you um, don't break that rule, uh, as long as I haven't broken that rule, I haven't run into any real deadlocks. The worst that I've run into is that this could, the, de the actual thing we're calling, could call us back, and um, we might have to make this mutex recursive. But with configuration, I haven't needed to do that. I had to do that for the raft implementation, though. Uh, this needs to lock. And so I'm going to do the same thing down here. There we go. Much nicer. And then next settings, we just need to make a copy of this and call it next settings. And then copy the documentation for it, which was here, right? These are the settings. Yes. Uh, here. All right. So I'm going to build that, and I'm just going to run the uh, new test I added, which conveniently show up with gray boxes here. So get next, fails. The next doesn't fail. So why does this fail? Oh, no. Bradley Monkey was supposed to get well, and he didn't. Why not? Oh, because it's not calling the right function. <laughs> this is why we have unit tests. Even for something so simple, I had that bug in there, right? There, now it's fixed. And we can run everything now. Make sure nothing broke. Because configuration is used elsewhere, right? And nothing broke. So, good. And next, we will... Um, well, I should check that in. You heard your name. Yeah, you were sick when I wrote this configuration class the first. So um, I'm like, how about a configuration where he starts off sick and then we make him well? <laughs> All right. Smart git c is a new git GUI that I've, not a new one, but new for me. A, a, a UI I've been using to uh, stage commits recently. And I've been trying to give it a shot. It has this nice dark theme. It has the same font I use in VS Code. 
So, so far, so good. So stage that one. I, I like to review all the changes I make to make sure I didn't miss something. Why did it show that? Oh, it got confused. I did replace that with that line. But it thinks that these replace that, but they don't really. They're adding... Yeah, Git sometimes gets this confused. It thought that that brace matched there, but really it doesn't. It matches this brace. It should really just say that line replaced these lines. This stayed the same, and we added these. Some, yeah, get used to Git being a little bit confused about differences. It doesn't know the syntax of the language. It's pretty um, ignorant, so stage that one. I have not had an active chat today. It has only gone two pages. It's been, been pretty quiet, but I've noticed this trend where on the uh, slower days, uh, viewership kind of just slowly ramps up and I get to um, the usual uh, chat levels later in the early afternoon. I think it has to do with uh, the geography and the people who are watching. A lot of them are in the EU and so it's still kind of in the morning for them. They might be um, at work doing their thing. So, I don't know. I thought about this last night that maybe I should stagger my schedule a little bit and stream in the evening sometimes. Maybe take a day off during the week and then do an evening one on a weekend. Something like that to um, give, to, uh, give up people in different geographical locations opportunity to watch when I'm um, streaming when, when they don't have to do something else. Anyway. Yeah. I think it's because of the other channels I follow, like Adam's channel. He has a lot of people from uh, the EU who are watching him. So it, it could be a networking slash community crossover thing. All right, this is adding the next. I'm going to stage that. Corner, corner. Okay. I forgot to stage that one entirely. Anyway, commit this. So this is configuration. Add next settings. Before I forget, let me stage this one. This is a nice command to kind of reset the cluster state. It's just it just blows away all of the state and it gets it gets reconstructed by the coordin by the orchestrator. So commit that guy. Add script for resetting cluster state. And then uh Right, I had relaxed the ping timeout because it was the orchestrator was getting too aggressive at, at restarting Realm servers while I was testing. So now it gives each Realm server a full second to respond to a ping rather than 200 milliseconds. It's in debug mode; it's not optimized, so it's gonna it's gonna be slow. So I, yeah, that was important, but only for my debugging, so I'm not gonna check it in. Did I forget to write to commit this yesterday? I did this yesterday. Yeah. I totally forgot to check this in. Let's check it in now. This was to get the remove a server to work. It's supposed to stop servers that got taken out of the cluster config. And then what's this change down here? Right, that's the same thing. Uh, so commit that. Hold on, I need to stage it first. The so orchestrator. Remove old servers. So that was two steps. Accept single configuration messages. And use them to update the known realm server map. Removing um, servers no longer in the cluster. The second part was when building the known realm server map, remove and kill servers no longer in the configurations. And so we can have one or two configurations, single or joint. That was it, right? Okay, actually, it doesn't kill them, it removes them, and then they get killed later because they are unrecognized. 
Yeah, so that works. Or wait a minute. Hold on, let me look. I think I did kill them there. Because I wanted a special message saying no longer in the config. So it does kill them. Yeah, I forgot to check that in yesterday. That's bad. Must have gotten distracted after the stream ended. Okay, this I think we're going to undo soon. So I'm not going to check that in. We can check the test in though, right? Yeah, because we mock everything. Oh, well, hold on. No, I will undo this because we won't write it to a file. We'll just change our our configuration object. Yeah. I'm not going to check that in. Next was um, the executor. The executor, its its job right now is whenever the configuration is changed through the through raft, it's it writes the file. So it's already writing. It should already be writing the next configuration. It just won't be um, putting it in the configuration object. So I need to add a case for that, right? There's a write new configuration. And there should be one for um, writing the uh, next as well somewhere here. Oh, no, this is it. Yeah, as soon as that new configuration... Uh, the stars, as soon as we get start reconfiguration, which is the very first step, we're supposed to write the new configuration. So right now it is just checking to make sure it put, got it in the file. So we should also check that it got in the um, configuration. So I'll put that next to it. So set next configuration. All right, so I don't need to worry about files here. So I'm going to remove this. Hold on, I'll reuse new configuration. So we'll reuse that line. We expect the new configuration to be in the configuration get next when we do that, right? And then um, I think we want to we want to remove the next. We want to basically set it to be invalid as soon as the um, final configuration. Yeah, this replace one. So like this. Only it's um, unset next configuration. There we go. So here I expect so slightly different. I expect JSON value type invalid for the configuration get next get type. We don't care about the files. There we go. There we go. Let's do it. <laughs> oh, there's one other thing I need to test. Uh, the um, boot up of the executor. It should read it. If it's on, if it's in on, if it's on the disk, it should um, read it in as the next. So where, where would I test this? Oh, this is just making sure it um, registered for callbacks. Or that the, um, yeah, that the executor registered for callbacks. The executor gets a callback from the journal whenever the journal gets a new entry. That's how it works. Okay, write new config. Yes, set next. Ignore committed with no commands, sure. Do not write new config start is old. Oh, right, yeah. Um. When we go through the log, we need to replay the log, but we don't. Yeah, got it. Okay. All right, so it's like this. Configuration built from file. So let's, let's make it n next configuration built from file. So instead of being committed, it's like, I think it called it next. No, I didn't. Um, what would it, was it provisional? I think it's provisional. Provisional is new. Yes. New, next, same thing. So we're going to put the answer in the provisional one and expect to get it out. So what actually, what does setup do? 
right now. 42. Okay, good. So we're at 85 to a provisional one. We expect to get next to have 85 in it. I wonder if I should kind of build into here. Actually, let's, let's make a special test. If there is no provisional file, so we don't do any arrange, we should expect um, the invalid case, right? For get next. So there is no next configuration if there's no um, provisional file. Okay, there. I think all the test, all the new test cases are up. We get it to compile now. Oh, I forgot to change the name of a test. Oh yeah, look at that. So no next configuration built from file if no next configuration file. How about that? It's a special case. Next configuration built from file if next configuration file exists. I tend to make very long names for my tests because I want it to so sort of be the documentation rather than having comments. All right, so test explorer, let's just run them all. So of course it fails because it doesn't, we haven't written the code yet. This is test driven development, right? Actually it passed some of them. This one, yeah. It didn't do it because there's no code to do it and any, anyway. It's really just a guard that it, we don't always do it. We only do it if the file exists. So right, it um, it didn't set it when it was committed because they haven't written the code yet. And the next one is not built from file because we haven't written that code either. Oh, there, here, there's Steinfeld. Rymu wave right back at Steinfeld. There we go. <laughs> I really need to make a shortcut in Yada to do that. Uh, I mentioned Yada, so I'll do the command. I don't use the built-in Twitch chat. I m use one that's browser-based that uh, a guy named Hideo wrote. I like it because it has a lot of extra tools for streamers and stuff, and um, he's actually a really cool guy. He added a feature for me and others where... Um, we're, New, newer streamers who are trying to get used to um, doing their work, doing their work, and then also reading chat. I had this problem where people would chat and I just wouldn't notice and they'd feel ignored. So now I asked him to um, have it make a little tone or, or sound, like a little knock-knock, if um, someone chats and it does that now. You won't hear it because I um, have that browser's audio muted. through. I mean, it does not route it through OBS, but I hear it. It most li mostly works. Sometimes I don't hear it, though, and I'm wondering if, if I just didn't hear it or if it didn't play. Okay, so let's write the code to make this new test succeed. So Steinfeld, what I'm working on today, I'm going to try to get server reconfiguration working. I have the remove a server works. I'm trying to get the add a server to work, and then i got to do some cleanup in order to make it more robust, and then there's some corner cases. But so I'm getting there. I can actually remove a server from my cluster, I just can't add one, which is important, right? <laughs> All right, so basically to add one, when a, when the new server comes up, it's got to look in two places for its configuration because it won't be in the current yet. It'll be in the next. So we're adding the the concept of the, the, the configuration having a next um, right now. It was already there for another reason. We're just plugging it into the configuration object itself and the executor making sure the executor um it connects it. It's it's the one that's in charge of connecting it. So yeah when let's do let's do the startup from file first. So that will be on start. We have it load the configuration. That's only one place, right? No, it's in two places. Finish. Set the settings based on what's currently stored in the file, okay. Right, and we have the restore from backup and all that. Why am I doing it here? 
This is, by the way, this is one of those corner cases. I mark them these days with a comment and the code with to do. I'll search for that string to find all my corner cases later. Oh, I think I know why. It was just, we wanted to do the actual, like, commit in a, in a sort of a fault tolerant way. So I did it by doing move of files, which should just, should just be a rename, so it shouldn't even fail. There's the astronomically small possibility it might fail, and that's why I have these very, very small corners. Anyway, yeah, load configuration is where I need to change it. And I need to change it so it's set the servings based off, set the server settings, say that three times fast, based on what is currently stored in the configuration files, because there's, there's now more than one. So that's configuration as JSON. We restore from backup. And then I think what we'll do is uh, not the whole procedure, but this is from the um, next, or is it provisional? Yes, from the provisional file, if it is not invalid, actually, if it is, then we do configuration. This is actually kind of hokey. Set an empty value. Actually, um, hold on. I don't need to do that. I can, I can keep it simple. I can just say, set the next based off of what we, tr what we actually read. And if we don't read it, then we don't have a next. There. Simple enough. I'm not going to worry about backups or anything like that. Because if we lose it, the worst case is that we might have to, um, it might have to get it from the journal again. Right? Okay, we actually we might have trouble. We might have trouble with a new server starting if its next config didn't get written properly. But that's really the orchestrator's responsibility, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, so I'm not going to worry about it. So that that should handle one one use case here. The built from file. There we go. This one's still broken, probably. Yep. So that's set when we um, commit start reconfiguration. Start reconfiguration would be uh, this uncommit start reconfiguration. So here we're supposed to, we wrote it, right, but we didn't set it, so we'll set it. Set next. And we happen to have it handy, right? It's called command configuration. There we go. That's all we need to do, right? That'll pass. Awesome. I'm going to run everything again as a sanity check. So we should have greens across the board, and then I can check this in. Getting there. One step at a time. It's kind of like you, uh, what you have to do when you are um, spelunking. If you've ever done this, if you've gone into a cave, spelunking is when you're uh, cave diving or crawling around under the earth, right? They tell you um, you want to have three points of stability at all times. So if you want to move, you uh, would move either your arm or your hand, your hand, your arm, your leg, whatever is one of your three points, and then move it slightly forward. Then repeat the process with one of the other two, and you kind of just make incremental progress. I kind of feel like that's what I'm doing now. Making incremental progress that it's not difficult. It's just, it is, it's very methodical, but it's very um, time consuming. There are lots of steps here. And I have to be careful. I'm doing these micro steps also because I, I need to be careful to keep the code relatively clean. And I'm, if the, there's design flaw, I, need, I would need to stop and um, as early as I can stop and fix it. What's, what really sucks is when you make a design and it has a flaw in it and you don't discover until really late and then you have to change a lot of code. I try to avoid that these days. Have I gone spelunking? I have. You can go to Carlsbad Caverns in New Mexico and um, if you sign up in advance, you can get like a private, uh, uh, not rock climbing, it's more like just squeezing through the through a crack in the uh, cavern and you go, get to explore a part of the cavern that um, is not on the usual tour. And that's where I learned that um, three points of stability thing. Because they don't want you to fall and it's scratched up. Because <laughs> there are no stairs, you're literally like squeezing through cracks in the earth.
It's one of the few places that I know that you can do that is at Carlsbad Caverns. And, like, not many people know about it. You have to um, sign up in advance. I don't know if you, if it's through the internet even. You might just have to call them. I don't remember. My wife set it up. But it was pretty fun. Okay, executor is now modified. So that's this and this. Commit. Executor. Uh, hook up new config JSON to configuration. Look, it just barely fit. Awesomeness. Ready to push all that. Okay, now I'm going to go back and redo the work I did this morning in the coordinator. So the coordinator tests will, will be modified. And it's this, is it that verify? Yeah, this one. So instead of writing it to a file like that, Actually, I'm not going to bother with this write to file anymore. I'm just going to remove it. Instead of doing that, I'm going to do it all through the, the, through the configuration object. So we will do that. And then instead of writing it, we'll just say configuration set next, next config. And then we're going to expect that the coordinator gets it from the configuration. So it will not at first. This will fail. Coordinator tests, verify new server, that's a V. This one, it's gonna fail now. So basically it couldn't find its port number, so let's go fix it now. Coordinator. Right, so where was that? Is that here? Right, so this one, we don't need to do this anymore. We will actually all remove this. This was sort of, yeah, did it in the wrong direction, right? So we don't do that anymore. Instead, we're going to get it from configuration. We'll be basically repeat some of this stuff. So it will be const auto next configuration get next and then I think it's okay to use the same name because it's this variable will hide that one which I kind of want I just need to use the next configuration here only danger is that someone reading this might get confused yeah I guess so let's make it next so it doesn't so it's not confusing this is the next realm config. This is next service config. And then we just repeat this. We get the next servers config. And then this goes away. Let's test it. All right, cool. And let's run everything. All right. Now that that's working, I am going to do this at the integration layer, which is where we discovered this problem. Where, where, where I discovered that this that the original solution wasn't complete. That the integration layer was, which is the main program of the Realm Server host, right? When it calls this uh, attach web gate layer transport, it passes in this configuration, and, the f and I think it's used for two things. To get the uh, host, the SSL certificate stuff out, and also to look up that server configuration, or the instance configuration. So I think what we'll do is we'll pass in both. Actually, why why am I bothering with JSON? Why don't I just pass in the configuration object? Realm server. Yeah. Actually, it's uh, not the web gates. Well, it does, yes. Okay, so it's a little bit different, right? 
it's that get. Oh, not an arrow. It's a dot. And then it's not const anymore because we got to do a check. It's similar to the check here. If it's null, then I'm going to repeat that with the um, next. That's the key there. And then all these places become uh, dot .get. I have to repeat that a few more times, then we should be good, right? Actually, um, it's kind of redundant, isn't it? Shouldn't I just look this up first? So const auto host config is that. And then just use host config. A little cleanup while, we, while we're at it, right? Okay, and then what else? What's the what's the bug here? Oh, look at that. <laughs> Oops. I'm looking at the little um little red um the red things there to let me know. Okay, so this becomes just uh dereference it, right? Yeah. Okay, here goes nothing. So we're going to again nuke the cluster stage and serve it. Uh oh. <laughs> They're dying. <laughs> Something went horribly wrong. Okay, what happened? They're not starting correctly? Configuration files there. Uh, let's just run it manually and see what happens. So that would be, we go to, let's make, do this in another shell. Orchestrator, yeah, we just go to this directory and we will just try to run it. Realm is a Kendanol instant zero. Ooh. <laughs> okay, no, no output at all. That's not good. It's probably, my guess is it's probably something simple with um, what I just did. I broke something. So next step is debugger. Just run it in the debugger and see what's going on. Oh, I had a breakpoint there. Uh, okay, what's going on? I bet it's going to get down to here. Um, where exactly? Here, maybe? Oh, look at that. It's uh, broken. Oh, <laughs> we can't do that with a temporary? What am I thinking? I'm just actually surprised I didn't get a compiler warning for that. Maybe I didn't, I just didn't see it. Shouldn't the compiler warn me when I do something stupid like that? So get returns um, a temporary, and then we're getting a reference to a temporary. Well, that temporary doesn't have any name, so it gets destroyed when this line is done. And um, then... You, the way you can tell is when you get to this line in the debugger and you look at that variable, it'll say, I don't know what that is. It's basically been destroyed. The compiler should tell you that you're getting a reference to a temporary when you do that. Okay, so the solution is just that. Yeah, so I was doing it okay here. here. It was just there. All right. Hopefully that'll fix that. Let's run it again here really quick. Make sure it just runs. It'll run and it'll complain that no one's talking to it. No? Oh, wait, wait. Um, I can't just do that. I gotta nuke stage and then serve it here at least once. Okay, um, yeah, it's running now. The reason I couldn't just run it again here is that this um, the copy of this file isn't actually updated 
by the stage script. It's the orchestrator actually does it on the fly. Right before it starts the server, it will update the code file. So, yeah, I have to run the orchestrator or do what it does. Anyway, it's working. So we're ready to try this with the add a server. So go to the console. And this should be set to go. Just tell it to go. Go! Oh, bad things happened. Oh, no, it just, we had a leadership change. It started 13. Oh, 10 died. Oops. <laughs> so the leader crashed. That's, is that new or is that maybe something I just did? Let's see if I can repeat it. So nuke stage serve and upload again. Yeah, I think it crashed. It's okay. So the way to debug this would be nuke stage and then um i think since we ran it before and we haven't changed the code file i can do this actually no i'm not going to do that i will run i have the debugger set up to do this so we will start it before we start the orchestrator and it should get um doesn't exist really why not isn't it running? Oh no, it's not running. Oh, okay. I have to serve first. Serve it. Uh, I guess we could attach to process. So thir one three one seven six. Yeah, let's do that. So one three one seven six. There it is. Unfortunately, um. <laughs> The timeout is too short because of the the attached process caused us to lose leadership. Um, that ain't gonna work. Probably happen again if I try to attach to twelve now, which is eight seventy. Ray twenty. Yeah, see now ten's a leader. So um, let's start zero in the debugger. It's gonna hopefully run. Oh, I need to remove the breakpoint. Go. It's going to run and it's basically complaining that no, it can't talk to anyone. So then I start the rest of the cluster. It'll get adopted. You can see it gets adopted here instead of being launched. And um, that's the complaints from 10. And now that's happy because 11 and 12 are, are running. Now we have it running in the debugger. And I can uh, try this. Upload. didn't crash. It's, was it stuck? Hmm. It's starting and stopping a lot of threads. I wonder what it's doing. Actually, I can see it here, right? Oh, it's running as a... Oh, it lost leadership. That's what happened. Yeah, right, right here. Lost leadership. Hmm. Wonder how am I going to trap this crash? Hey there, Doe. How's it going? Doe. How's it going? I'm trying to track down a, a problem right now that, um... Oh, what is that? Problem is that the leader crashes right now during a reconfiguration. In fact, it happened here. Ten. Oh no, ten died on purpose. It launched ten. Ooh, look at that. <laughs> the server uh, thirteen got mad that um, no, another server got mad at thirteen that it asked for too many requests too quickly. That's funny. I have built in uh, re uh request cap for to avoid spamming between servers. Should maybe lift that. Okay, got 11 got leader, but what happened here?
They're trying to connect to each other and they can't? Oh no, 13 can't... Oh, right, the other ones aren't talking to 13. Yeah, because of the cleanup at work I haven't done yet. Anyway, let's start over. Stage serve. Three beers, too many for you tonight. The thing that's weird about talking to um, people around the world is for me, it's the morning. So it it's weird that there are people watching that are, for them, it's the evening. I'm sorry that you had one too many. If that's what you meant. Okay, uh, admin console. Upload new config. And, oh, it didn't crash that time. Well, that's good. Actually, I think it worked. Look at that. We changed from a three server to a four server cluster. It launched it. Oh, wait a minute. It launched and now what? What's the state is it in? I guess I can connect to it. Oh, it's stuck or something. This only happens if it gets stuck. Oh, wait a minute. Something wrong with Chrome. It's stuck. Chrome stuck. I've never seen this happen before. Just reset, reload it. Something wrong with Chrome. Let's kill Chrome. Die, Chrome. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Can't close Chrome. What's going on? Close window. I can't kill Chrome. <sighs> uh, come on, Chrome. I want you to die. Die, Chrome. Die. Where's Chrome? Where are you? Chrome. Kill process tree. There we go. It's dead. I've never seen Chrome misbehave like that. Anyway, let's try to talk to 13 again. Well, that's really weird. It gets into some weird state. I've, I've killed Chrome somehow. Look at like nothing works. I can't even close the window. That's really strange. Uh, maybe I won't use Chrome? Bye-bye, <sighs> Chrome. Let's try another Firefox window. Uh, I need to load a config file. Yes. Um, yes, we're going to go projects. New config. Uh, connect. What? Oh, certificates. It doesn't like the certificate. Um, I can fix that by going to it directly, right? For the first try. 8082. It'll complain. No, that's not the right one. Four. It'll complain, and I say advanced add exception. Permanently store. What if I don't do that? And then go back to where I was. Okay, yeah, there that worked. Okay, so. Oh, look at that. It's constantly pinging us with a new connection request. I had run into this problem yesterday. Ah, uh, crap. I have to do the certificate thing again. The, for Firefox, it's every single one. 8090, right? Advanced. Add exception, not permanent, confirm. Now I can try it again. 
13. Okay, it's connected. Oh, look at that. Oh, 10 through 12 are, are not, um, are closing the connection abruptly. Okay. Hmm. They're just like not accepting the connection. Interesting. Is that because it's... I think I might know why. But I'm not sure. Let me look. Um, where do we accept new connections? That would be WebGate, right? So if it's 9 p.m. where you are, that would mean you're like you're you are um, GMT plus two. Or how do you, is that how you say it? GMT plus two. You are in Europe, sir or ma'am. Um, it's when we get a new connection, right? This one, what does it do? Right, it calls a delegate. It just passes, okay, WebGate doesn't care. Doesn't care who connects. So that must be in the coordinator that we're doing something wrong. So it's on the webs on the WebSocket delegate. Web New Incoming Connection, is that what it's called? Yes. So on new incoming connection. It adds it to the unidentified private connections, yes. What, what do we just keep it on? What happens here? Oh, wait a minute. There's the engine part. We have to look at that too. Yes. So if it's closed, we erase it. If it's identified as an orchestrator, okay, maybe it's here we have a problem. Maybe it's this get server config. Reads from cached configuration. Oh, that's right. It'll be old. It'll be like, oh, well, that server's not in the list. So ignore him. <laughs> okay. So, yeah, it's, using this cached configuration is a problem. Let's look at all the places where it's used. Key park connection. Yeah, this is bad. This one, okay, also bad, right? Hold on, wait a minute. I thought I had it updated. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's supposed to be updated. We sent us. We should have sent something. Configuration changed. So I should have seen that way, way back up here. Yeah, configuration changed. 10, 11, and 12. So it should have accepted 13, right? Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. It sent when? It sent multiple times. Oh, I know what it is. It, they, it never accepted 13 because it's not in the, it's not been confirmed in the cluster. We only started. We didn't um, actually go into joint consensus yet. So we can't just pull out of the uh, current config for um, accepting servers. We have to pull from the next as well. 
So let me do, let me see. Do I ever? I don't actually do get next, do I? Um, so let's add that. Uh, how am I gonna? I should do this test driven way, right? So I gotta think of a test scenario for this. Maybe I have one that's similar. So it's like we're adding a new server, or we have one where it's it knows its own port numbers now, but. I don't think I don't think I have any I have update configuration when it changes, but what does that do? It's just looking at the uh get configuration. Definition please. Okay, fine. Search isn't working for me today. There it is. Yeah, it just looks at the cached configuration. And we're only doing set. We're not doing a set next. All right, so, well, that's fine. Raft properly, yes, okay. Leadership change, fine. What's this? That is a placeholder? Yeah, okay. Announce. I'm trying. I'm trying to look for a test that ha is similar in its setup, so I can just copy from it to save time. None, none of them are really that close. I guess I can look for start reconfiguration here. Applies it there. Do not write one if it's old. That's it. Okay. <laughs> How about finish? It, that it's apply. That's all we care about. Um. Okay. How about on the configuration changed? Changed. Commit configuration delegate. That's the mechanism we'd use to trigger it. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. That's the wrong one. <laughs> that's raft. That's raft. Um, change. Commit configuration delegate. That's the one. So where do we trigger that? No, that's. That's not it either. It's um, it's the configuration. Oh, wait a minute. Um, we don't mock that. Hey there, bug found. I'm deep in the midst of trying to come up with a use case to replicate the bug I just found, which is that um, when we're trying to up from three servers to four, the um, Coordinator gets the configuration change, but it's only looking at the old set to figure out who to to talk to. And so this 13 server starts up, but none of the servers want to talk to it. Um, that's not this area. It's sort of in, you can't see it because it's under the threshold, but all of the um, 10 through 12 are just rejecting the connections that 13 is trying to make. And so 13 never gets to join. So the bug, I need to reproduce the bug in the test. I need to set up a test where we um, we tell the coordinator configuration has changed, and we have this kind of split configuration, like old and new, and then it's and then we try to connect from a new server, and it should accept the connection, basically. Yeah, poor thirteen, exactly. Actually, you know what? Uh, I do have tests for accepting connections to other servers. Let's do that. Let's take from that. Accept connection from other instance, exactly. So let's take this test and we'll we'll make it a more difficult example of that. In fact, I'll put it right next to this one. Accept connection from other instance. The old one will be already in configuration or in current configuration. And then we'll have only 
in next configuration. That's what we'll say. Actually, that that makes me think I I'm I might be I might need to do a little bit more work today than I thought because once we accept it, we need to make sure we don't accept votes from it. Actually, I think Raft will take care of that for us. Yeah, we should be good. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, so I need to invent an instance that doesn't exist yet. Um, have we used one, two, three, four, five yet? Actually, I did. What is this? Oh, okay, I was going to. I used it there too. Right. So that test also used a one, two, three, four, five, and this one was different. I just want to make sure the setup, the initial set doesn't have one, two, three, four, five in it, because that would be bad. 885, 1337, 13531 doesn't have one, two, three, four, five. Okay, good. So this client will pretend to be the new server. Right now, it shouldn't accept it, right? Actually, do I have a test for if it doesn't get accepted? Oh, here we go. Yeah, we I do have a test for that. So yeah, it basically is dropped. It's dropped because it's no longer in unidentified and it's no longer in the instance. All right, so good. That's the secret password to everything. One, two, three, four, five. That's the same password I have in my luggage. How many people know what that's a reference to? The code is one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. I forget how he says it, but it's like, that's the same combination I have on my luggage. Um, right. So, it should come up as this, and it should be the matching server end of our client. So, of course, this won't work now, and it sh so let me verify. It shouldn't work now. This is the current behavior. Okay, this one will work. It's in the config, right? This one will not work because it's not right. So to to make it so it should is we will have we'll pretend that there's a configuration change. Mm. How do I do this? Was it this? Yeah, it was this. Yeah, we'll do that. So we mobilize the server. We Change the configuration and add one, two, three, four, five as a new server. Then we do a connection and we claim to be that server. It should accept us. It probably doesn't, and that's the bug. Spaceballs, yeah, you got it. Well, did Rally Monkey help by saying Dark Helmet? <laughs> that was the one, two, three, four, five is the combination to unlock the uh, the planetary defense uh, air shield. <laughs> such a silly movie all right so this should pass and it fails so there i've recreated the bug all right how am i, how am I going to fix this bug it's uh when we identify right so infra uh is that in the engine yeah server identification here we go Realm is server identification. So right now it's only looking there. Oh yeah, I think I do need to have a pair. So that's cached. Current and cached next. So it's all configuration. Okay, did I write a comment this a little bit ago? In executor. 
or was it coordin where was it executor let's just take from this I don't remember this holds all configuration items for the game server in the Okay, no, I don't want that. Um, I'll just rewrite it from scratch. We'll do it live. This holds all items for game servers in the configuration the cluster will have once the current reconfiguration process is complete. There we go. How many videos? You mean like how many streams? And if you're talking about Raft, that's a good question. When did I start working on Raft? Yeah, so stream 76. 86, 96, so 24, 25 streams have been using the Raft consensus algorithm, but not all of them have been using Raft. I'm, I'm, I'm hopefully I'm done with Raft. Right now I'm just using it. So yeah, uh, how do I show that? Yeah, so Raft is all encapsulated there, and we're right next door to Raft. We're basically interpreting um, what Raft is telling us. When Raft tells us we're in a new configuration, we're like, okay, we need to start using it. And I'm going to look for all the places cached configuration is set. Actually, yeah, where is it set? Yeah, okay, where it's set, we'll set the new one. Cached next configuration is configuration get next. Yeah, raft should be done. I hope so. I don't want, it's really complicated. <laughs> Actually, I probably need to go back and refactor it. Okay, that's next. Let's restore it. One thing at a time. I, I, need, I do need to um, handle this too. But that's maybe a different use case. Hold on. Okay, so yeah, we probably should use it here because if it fails, if, if it fails to find it here, the host name will be an empty string and it'll look in the empty string or ranking, and then it might possibly drop the connection. So, hmm, yeah. I wonder if I can just do it in this get server config. I should probably also um do that separately like get host config yeah let's see what i'm gonna see what where where is get server config used if it can be um that could be the single point of change that might be nice do we even use this anymore are we do there hmm Shoot. Um, I gotta, I gotta change a bunch of stuff here. I think. You know, it, it's easy. It's most easily solved by removing direct access to that fun, to that variable. So. So let me count the places. So it's used when we're deciding whether or not to keep our connection. It's used in the worker thread to figure out what to do. It's returned there for testing. It's okay. Here's here's another example where I need to update it. Actually, let let's let's refactor this. So, impl. Um, hold on. Where it's set here, right? 
Yeah, so it's in the shared. So impl shared cache configuration, right? Um, we do store it first, so it's safe. So let's do that here as well. I could spell. Okay, and then this move. This is refactored then. into that okay and then that moves there let's move it out from these on methods <sighs> where's the first non on method if i put on in front if it's like doing if it's doing work in response to an event happening that's my convention there's an out of order function there Another one. Up here somewhere. Like maybe here. And then let me go to where that's declared. And we'll put it here. Update our cache of the game configuration. Uh, by sampling the current state of the configuration object. Okay, so that's done in one place. What's left here? We're okay with the declaration. Get server config, okay. Cash for that's okay. Yeah, this is one place we need to change it. So the things that are looked up are hosts realms. What's realms used for? To get the realm, to get the server. Is it just to get the server count? Huh. Why do we need the number of servers? Oh, we don't. Look at that. Let me verify that. That's dead code. Any opportunity I get to kill dead code, I take it. So if I just delete that, if it still builds, it was dead. Aha, uh -huh, it was dead. So does that mean that this is dead code too? Yep, and this? Nice, I killed dead code. So that reduces the number of matches here. Right? So we need it. If, like, if I had like a get host config, because it's only used to get our host name. Oh no, it's also used for their host name. I guess I can call it twice. Thing is, like, if we don't find the, the algorithm is going to be, we look in our current config. If we can't find it, we look in the next config if it's there. That way, it, um, every, everything server instance related is flexible to work with the current config and also the servers that are coming in as well and we will we prefer to use the current not the next what's this oh okay this is when we do the switch yes okay actually this is on on commit when this is committed shouldn't we it should instead of doing it here shouldn't we do it when the configuration tells us it's changed that's maybe a let me think let me put that in a note i need to think about that more oh currently oh not here currently coordinator uh, decides to tell orchestrators about uh, config new configuration, next configuration. When start reconfiguration is committed, would would it be would it be better to um, 
do this instead whenever the configuration object tells us the configuration has changed and there is a next configuration available because that also happens in response to this the executor will um, write to the new configuration right that's what the executor does in response to this Yeah, it sets it. So we could wait until that happens. Actually, we should wait until that happens, right? We should do that because we don't know the order in which these uh, on commits are received. If the co coordinator received it first, that means we haven't yet actually written it out. So I really should move this. Actually, then that would be cleaner too because then the coordinator doesn't have to hook the um, on journal commit at all, right? Because the only thing it hooks it for is that command. And where do I hook, do the hooking? Right there. I wouldn't even have to do that at all, which means we wouldn't even need access to the journal. Okay, that's, that's major. That, that means I can cut a line here. I don't need that line anymore because we would rely on this path and then that um, going to that. And then it goes through that single point. That's probably safer too. Single point of, um, what do they call it? Truth? Single point of truth? Single source of truth? Have this be the single source of truth. Executor is the only one changing it. We read it. We don't get it back as a callback from the journal. I think the answer is yes, and I'll remember to do it later. It's not critical now. Single source of failure. Actually, well, that's what you want, though. Single source of failure, and then what you do is you try to make it so it never fails. Or if it fails, that you, uh, that you have a recovery, and then you only need to do the recovery in one point. It's kind of different than in the real world, right? In the real world, you do not want a single source of failure. You want a, um, you want redundancy. Yep. I prefer to have single points of, con like, where only one component or one function is concerned about some a, a source, right? Uh, if you have multiple things that are concerned about something, then there's multiple things you have to change to um, whenever um, something happens. Okay. Back to searching for this. That's fine. Hmm. Cache at first. Okay, that's fine. Yes. Actually, hold on. This is the problem now. Because it'll get changed whenever we go to the next. Yeah, we only want to do this if the um, next configuration is empty. Actually, I'm surprised this didn't break stuff. Surprised it didn't break other things. Maybe it did, and I just didn't run them to see that. Maybe I don't have a test for that. If we, ch if we set the next configuration, it should not send that to the orchestrator. I, actually, I probably don't have a test for that. Um, the orchestrator will become leader. Diagnostic messages. Or it's configuration change. What kind of configuration change? Oh, that's what if it's sent to a follower. Once start is committed, but that's single configuration, not change configuration. Yeah, joint, joint configuration.
Oh, it hasn't been committed yet. That's why. <laughs> okay, here we go. I think this assumes too much. Yeah, we're suddenly setting the new config and not a next config. Yeah, I think let's make another test here. We'll call it do not. Do not announce single configuration to orchestrators uh, when start configuration committed, start reconfiguration committed, because that's what's that's what the executor does, right? On start reconfiguration, it sets the next. It should get the callback, and right now it's probably going to send the orchestrator a message. So. I would see that here, right? On the um on journal commit. It's gonna go in and and send it immediately. Actually what is send send just queues it to be sent, right? So to test this I would I would do the commit. Oh no, it sends it. It does not queue it, it just does it. So it should be immediate. I don't need to wait. So, yeah, this doesn't. This is doesn't matter. We identify as the orchestrator. We make it the leader. We, what is this? Prepare a new configuration. All right, but now here instead of doing set, we'll do set next. And I don't actually know if I need to do this, but I don't don't need to do that either. What I would expect to happen is we do not get that. So let's just do this. So for const auto message received in orc get text messages received. Expect not equal to single configuration. Or the uh, message, this is misspelled. Message received dot, or actually with index type, right? This returns a vector, right? A vector of JSONs, yes. So it should not be, we should not see a single configuration command. Oh, uh, what did I miss here? Why is it not like that? Oh, that's not not the right syntax. All right. What's wrong? I can't do that. Oh, because this needs to, I need to tell it it's a string. That's a bit ambiguous. Cuz this is not a standard string, it's a C string. Okay, so it's not ambiguous. Now let me run it. It should appear here, right? Do not announce. Yeah, see, so it's broken. I'm glad I'm noticing these things, and now and not later. So it's broken because in the engine, when we get that, um, no, it's not here, right? It was, where was it? Here, it was it was here so this we do not want to set send unless we don't ha we no longer have a next configuration so if configuration well next cache next configuration get type 
equals JSON value type invalid. So basically, we don't have a next configuration. Then it's a single. Now, sending the joint one is handled differently. That's when this is committed right now, but I was going to move that to back to here. So it actually look a little bit cleaner. We'll have an else set joint configuration. Maybe I just do. I should just do that now. I might have to change some of the tests though, because right now they might it might go through a journal commit, and it's mocked, and this it won't. There's no executor, so I might have to change some tests, but I'll do it later. Let's, let's make sure this fixes that this this breakage here. Okay, good. And nothing else should be broken, except for this one we're still working on. Stuff is kind of complicated, isn't it? But um, I'm I'm leverage I'm heavily leveraging my test suite to uh, guide guide me on anything I broke. And if I don't see it in the unit test suite, I add it. It's sort of like a religious thing. If you don't have a test covering something, add a test to cover it, and you just keep doing that until your test suite is comprehensive enough. Yeah, n only in next. Okay, so only. In next, there we go. Right, okay, yeah, so just getting reoriented. In order for that to work, I need to make sure this cached configuration, we need to be very careful by using that. So I'm gonna focus, I'm gonna focus it so that the cached configuration is only used in a very small number of places. I want it to be used in get server config and probably a get host configs. It's it's wherever we actually need it now. I'm going to move it to to be used uh, elsewhere. So let's refactor this first. So we need this host config for here and here. So here we'll just say, con and we'll just get a copy this time. We'll say shared get host config our host name. And then I don't think we need this anymore, right? And then this becomes this, like that, right? And I'm, as I'm going, I'm eliminating references to the cached configuration. That's the goal. So again, here, um, host config is used here. just remove host config and then here actually the way I think about it um we that last place I had get host config I could still use a reference because uh we will not return a temporary because get server config does not return a temporary either, it returns a reference. Yeah, okay, that's better. All right, where else? Mm, why do we need realms config? To get the um, instances missing. Okay, so really I could just have another helper that returns us the IDs of all instances, right? I'll do that in a second. Let me just handle this one first. That one's for testing, that's fine. Is this the same deal? Why don't we just use get server config here? I don't know why. We should, right? Ample share get server config or um instance index oh wait a minute that's the problem right problem is we, problem is it's uh oh, shoot problem is it's told the not the instance id but the instance index and so it has to look it up so this, one, this one's a bit special right now if i change this to be instance id i could use get server 
config and in in order to actually is it only used to get the instance id no it's used to get the port numbers too okay Hmm, yeah, there's another play. Uh, no, this one's fine. This one's fine. So these two are fine for now. I should eliminate the ones I decide are fine. That one's fine. This one is fine. This one is fine. That one's not. I don't think I need that anymore, right? Yeah, this should be content, context, engine, get, sir, get host config, our host name. I can eliminate. This and this, right? Or just that one. All right. I'll change that in a second, I think. This one's fine. Yes, that one's fine, that one's fine. I think that one's okay. That one is gonna be in both, and it's just, this is the buffer, max log buffer size. If we change it, it just won't take effect until it, it's fully reconfigured, that's fine. All right, so that's good server config. Uh, so that one's that one we'll get to. That one is yes, that's fine. All right, so this one becomes get host config. Oh wait a minute, hosts config. We yeah, so this one engine get host config, our host name. So we don't need get hosts config anymore. And down here, context engine get host config. That one was okay. And that one was okay as well, right? <coughs> so that one. And in here, and this was, this needs to be a special thing, right? Because that's only used to get that, which is only used to get that, which is only used to get. Find missing, uh, find missing instances could do it for us, right? Yeah, why is find instances just not looking it up itself? Is it because this is not in, no, it's in the impl. So what, the, what the heck am I doing? Nothing else uses servers config, right? Yeah. Let's just room, let's just take it out. Um, I'll move it for first. Hold on, one thing at a time. That is that which needs that. Okay, so it's these three lines. We'll move into there, which has which will have no longer have any argument. So in other words, we do that. And remove this. All right. And then this is the one where you have to fix up in a second. I think what we want to do is just we iterate over both. So... Can I just do this? Can I say for const auto I'm trying to do it without making a copy. I really can't. So um, I guess that would be what if we call it twice? And we merge them. Well that okay then maybe a helper would be better. So it would be find missing instances 
from config and then we'll pass in a config. And then we'll we'll have it add it'll be void because it's going to accumulate. How about we'll say add missing instances from config? Well no, not add. That's fine. It'll, the the semantics will make it clear. Is I'm not going to return a set. I'm going to add to a set. Okay, and then it's going to basically be the body of this. Well, this is realm. Oh, it's this whole thing, really. So instead of that directly, it's just going to be that. And then that we remove. And then it's inserted, and then we just call this twice. So call it once with um, shared cached config. And then we have to make the set first. So make the set missing instances. And then we call it with the new config next config what did I call it next cache next config or something okay now it's a superset or it's a it's a, a union of those two right it's basically getting a set of the IDs of all servers that it doesn't have records for and now it's going to include the new servers as well as the current ones let's document this Um, add to the given set the unique identifiers of all other realm servers to, um, indicated in the given um, configuration. To which the server is not already connected. It's maybe a clumsy sentence, but that's fine. So, parameters, config. This is the game configuration listing servers to locate. And then in and out is the missing instances. This is the set to which to add the unique identifiers of any a server not located not yet located. All right. And it doesn't return anything. Okay. Good. So now, it's that's fine. Uh, that I got re-added somehow. That one's special. That's special. That one's fine. Okay, so now we're just that one's good now. So now it's just this, and I need to add a get host config. All right, cool. So we're just going to basically do this twice. Uh, mm, yeah. So. And you know, I don't, I don't actually need to do that. I can just return null pointer. Oh, wait a minute. Uh, no, I think I do need to do that. It needs to be static because returning a reference, right? Yeah. Okay. So next servers config num next servers. <laughs> Actually, hold on. Let's do this more smartly. Multi-select. Next servers. And then this one again. Multi-select. Next. And this one is cached next config. Okay. So now it's going to look through both collections, basically. So it can find the server configuration if it's in the current set or if it's in the next set. Optimistically search the current first, and if it can't find it, it falls through and looks in the next. And if there is no next, it should be safe because this will they're all will get null objects, and the size of a null object is zero. So yeah, it should still work. So we have get servers config. I don't have get host config though. So let's add that. Get host config. 
and that needed a name a host it's given a host name right so host name I'm always on the fence whether to make it two words or one I don't know this is the name of the host for which to return the configuration if there is no host to the given name and then we need to change this in the current or next configurations Returns a reference to the configuration of the host with the given name. Okay, and then I wanted to change this one to current or next configurations. There we go. All right, so body for that was here. It's, so it's going to look pretty close, pretty similar. In fact, maybe I can make a template out of this. I don't know. Think about it later. Right now, copy pasta for the win. Okay, so instead of realms, it's hosts. And it's hosts config. Hold on. Multi select here. Actually, how do you undo? Hmm. If you hit control D too many times, how do you undo it? Actually, and its code is going to be a bit different anyway. Um, actually, we can just say host config and then just reference it. We just say if host config dot get type equals JSON value type invalid, then uh, return cached new next configuration hosts host name right else return host config so we don't need the null anymore just naturally gets null if it falls if it if it can't find it there all right well that build and more importantly will it run let's find out I don't want to break any other old tests. Oh, look, it even passed the new test. Nice. So how does it run in the in the real world here? Kill that. Let's nuke it. Let's stage. Let's serve. Okay, so far so good. It booted them up. It They picked a leader. And I guess to go for the prize, I will uh, try to update the configuration. So should be able to connect to the leader here. And let's reduce the log level a little bit. We'll tell it to upload the new config. What did it do? It connected to 13. That's nice. Did it actually do the right thing, though? Thirteen says I joined the cluster. It didn't... Okay, it didn't progress to the next stage. It's supposed to progress when... Um, 13 gets the, the log replicated. So the question I have is, did the log get replicated correctly? And that's easy to see. We can look at the um, state files. So here's the log. There's one thing in it. Did it get? Did it make it all the way here? No, it didn't. What about its raft config? Term one. It did not vote. Okay. Is it receiving entries though? Let's see if it. Let's see if. Uh, let's connect to thirteen and ask it. Is if it's receiving anything. Wait a minute. I don't have it. Oh, okay. That's a problem. I'm not. Ha I'm not logging anything when it responds. So it's receiving a heartbeat. Basically, it's receiving nothing. Last index one. So the question, it should be responding false. I don't have that. And then the, the leader should be like, oh, you don't have that? Let me send you it. Uh, let's reconnect to the, to the leader and see why.
Okay, let me look at it. It gets. I had to turn the threshold a little bit lower and then up so it doesn't get too much spam. So there we see 13 is returning false. Um, do, do I not printing out when I send? Hold on, let's l lower it even more. Okay, there we go. Question is, what is it doing? It's just sending heartbeats, and it gets a heartbeat back saying, I don't have it, but it's not replicating it? Shouldn't it do that? Hmm. That would be... Is that in raft? Yeah, it's all in raft. So this might, this might be a raft bug. Uh, means I'm not done with raft. Say it's not so. Okay, so it's on receive append entries results, right? So if we get a failure... We're supposed to replicate the entry if the next is, so the next was greater than one, right? I'm not printing it out, actually. Wait a minute, hold on. Maybe that's the problem. It's not sending the first one. I think this might be an off by one bug here. So what are we supposed to do if next was one, but we didn't send anything, and they said false because, hey, I don't have anything in my log. I think it's a case I never handled. So that's a corner case I never handled. That's... That's good I found that. So this needs to be slightly different, right? It basically um we need to we need to attempt log replication if either it was greater than one and if did it fail, or if it's equal to one and we didn't send anything. Or if it's or if we didn't send anything. Yeah, if we didn't send anything what will what will replication do? Actually, yeah, this is a special case. It should, if we didn't send anything, it should always succeed unless it didn't have the last. If it didn't have the last, it's either that we need to go back and give it to them, or they didn't have anything. So it is a special case. It'll be an else. Else, we need to just call attempt log replication again. Because attempt log replication, what it does is it says, okay, let's actually give them log entries. Okay, so yeah, it's a bug in raft. I need to take a short bio break, and I'll come back and I'll try to fix this bug. We'll get one step closer to uh, getting that server to join our cluster. I'll be right back. I'm back. Hey there, ICQ freak. The more indirect your pointers are, the more stars or your variables, the higher your reputation will be. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no. <laughs> that was a... 
Makes me think back to the code I used to read from my last job other people would write where they'd have triple pointers and sometimes you'd see a quadruple pointer. And um, my friends and I had a joke that like, um, it was called hashtag triple pointer shaming whenever we would see that because uh, it's like there's a, only one case where we felt that you should ever have a triple pointer and that was where you have a, a very deeply nested structure yeah, quadruple pointer shame. If you have a very deeply nested structure and you're doing it in C, then like it's, um, we were doing 3D audio. So it's like a um, positional audio. And there you have to deal with harmonic, what is it? Uh, higher order ambisonics. And ambisonics are like uh, capturing multi-dimensional vectors where uh, like one dimension is the number of coefficients in the ambisonics, and then another, a second dimension would be the um, time, and the third dimension would be um, what, what was it? Coefficient, time. I can't remember what the third one was, but the, the I I was working with this just to implement. Just to um, test the algorithm that was implemented by the systems team, and their code had uh, triple and quadruple pointers because they just had multi-dimensional data structures that were basically flat arrays for speed, you know, for performance and for um, yeah, basically for performance reasons, they just had it um, a simple multi-dimensional array, and but they wanted to be able to swap buffers around, so they used a lot of indirection. So it's like, okay, fine, we'll give them a license to do it. But other places we just see people just needlessly in, indirect. And that that we would shame them by having too many levels of indirection. Triple pointer? What the hell are you doing? Right, so the we need to make a test case for this, right? It would be a, f lead, a follower fails on initial heartbeat and there's no log or there's a one there's exactly one thing in the log basically yeah so it's a very very corner case so i'm going to look for append entries results your events commit when majority no that's not it Aha. Uh -huh. Append older entries after discover followers behind. So it's like this case. Only it's a corner case of this. Leader appends first entry, or only entry, only log entry, after discovering follower has no log. At all. Nope. No, sir. I am new, please forgive me. <laughs> All right, so we're going to have one entry in the log, right? Called entry. And no second entry. We become the leader. We advance the clock a little bit so that it will... Actually, why am I doing that? I don't know. Oh, because it's going to send out the um, heartbeats to the rest of the cluster. LP, LP, LP byte, yeah. <laughs> or LPPP byte. Okay, so we're going to pretend that, yes, we're in the same term, but no, we don't succeed and we have no match. Serialize that. What do we expect will be sent back as a response? We expect it will try to append from nothing one message that has the term that has the entry in it so i bet this fails now that's what it should do i don't think it does it because that's the bug we're reproducing let's uh let us see no it does work okay maybe i'm not understanding what's going on Server test leader append this one. 
having a little fun there with the name. Um, let's go to here and let's watch it happen. So where I thought the bug was is in server. Here. So let's see what, what happens here. Next index is two. Two. What was on my log showing though? Uh, I think I actually lost it, didn't I? The admin console doesn't... Oh no, it's here. Oh, we don't actually print what we're sending. Shoot. I probably should. But what does it say at the top? Oh, we already lost it. Um, okay. Bummer. It should be... I guess it, it would start out with two, right? This would be two, and we'll say, yeah, we matched up to one. This is saying zero. Interesting. You know what? It's there are two failures. Maybe it tried to retransmit, and it still failed. I think that's what I'm seeing. I'm seeing two failures. Oh, right. Yeah. It failed for two, then one, then zero. Yeah. So it's... um. Actually, it shouldn't fail then on the second one. So it's not a bug in Raft, right? It was just an off by one in my understanding. It'll start at two with no entries, then go back to one and replicate the first entry. Okay, so there is no bug in Raft. It's something else. But I guess it's a good corner. It's a. It's not. Uh, it's not bad to add corner case tests. So I'll leave it in there. Uh, let me check that in. That's raft. So stage, commit that, server tests, add test for corner case. Test the corner case where a follower rejects a heartbeat when it when there is only one log entry and the follower doesn't even have it, doesn't even, has nothing at all, no log at all. So I didn't lose, I didn't lose anything like that, I just made my test suite stronger. So what is actually going on? Why would it, why would it indicate failure twice on the retransmit? It shouldn't, unless, um, what? Why wouldn't it not accept it? What I really want to see is the log from 13, actually. Is this cluster still running? Oh, it is. So I can actually look at 13 and ask it what's going on. Right, there's no log message, though, to tell us. Oh, wait a minute. It's receiving the heartbeat, but not the retransmit? That's weird. Because this is telling me, sending a heartbeat... Receive success from 11 and 12 for, for 13, a failure. Wait a minute, why is, it, why is it, why are we seeing 11 and 12 again? It's like it sent it twice or something. Weird. Is that, oh, is it? Hmm. No. Why is it twice? And here it only heard back from 11 and 13, but not 12. This is like extra strange to me. Oh, is it just, no, that's just the log. I stopped logging at level zero ones at that point. Um, yeah, this is really weird. It's like it's not retrying for some reason. 
I think I need to log more. So let's log more. We'll kill the cluster and nuke it. And we'll add a little bit more logging in raft. Uh, append entries results. I think maybe I, I want to put a message in here and attempt log replication. I'm not. Oh, I actually am printing something. Oh, it never. So it never called this because we never saw these things. Interesting. So this is not true. Maybe I want, maybe I need to print next index. Yeah, let's print that. Received that match. Let's um next we'll just print out the next one. Next is what? A size T. Is it actually match a size T too? I had this so I had this wrong. That was wrong. How many other places do I have that wrong? Nowhere else. Okay, good. So it goes here, it will be instance dot next index. And we need to get index a little bit earlier. Okay, yeah, let's go with that. Let's see what happens when we do this. Stage, serve, and then go to our admin a console. Why is it not connecting? Connect. Is this hosed again? I don't know. It was in kind of some kind of weird state there. All right. Upload. Okay. Now drop to zero. And I guess we, we're printing more, so I need to see a little bit more. Okay. Next, it, oh, that's wrong. How did next ever get to be zero? That's a bug. Next should never be zero. Does it start out as zero and I just never initialized it? Next index. Zero. It means we never sent anything. We never tried to send anything to... Oh, wait a minute. That's supposed to be initialized to something when we add the server, to, isn't it? Next index is supposed to be initialized. I bet it's because it's not... Oh, right. It's initialized when we assume leadership, but then... They got added afterwards. So uh, we never, um, we never said it. <laughs> okay. Slightly different test for that then. So it's kind of like this arrangement, only different. Instead of us stepping down, it will be we should be sending the correct heartbeat. So send correct heartbeat to new servers once single configure con single config committed. Okay, so the arrangement is we are instance two. Let's, instead of removing a guy, we'll add one. So let's, I don't know, add 12. Why not? So we're going to add 12. So we append that directly. 
as a single configuration command, right? And then we should... What's the, the I guess the act is just to do this. Wants it to commit, all oh right, to commit it, we have to basically go through all of the, mm, yeah, we have to, we have to give some results back. So, let me think about this. No, it's committed, right? Um, and no, it's committed when they say it's committed. So we'll we'll go through and have a majority of servers say um, we match that, and then it'll get committed, and then we should expect a heartbeat to be sent out. Actually, it should send it out right away. We don't even have to wait until it's committed, don't we? Yeah. So it's not even when it's committed. Send correct heartbeat to new servers right away. Uh, once it's applied. Yeah, 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 yeah. Once it's applied, that's some first moment we pick up the new config, and so we should be initializing that. Okay, good. So, we just need to pick out the one that goes to 12. So, right, so... So it's not this kind of a uh, act, is it? The act is this. And the assert is that we expect it to be sent, so... bool new server received heartbeat. False. And then we'll expect to, it to be true. Four. Uh, let's clear messages out of here. Yes, so messages sent clear so we're going to th go through all the messages const auto message sent in messages sent if you're wondering where like this variable messages sent is this test is in a framework and the framework has a bunch of shared variables in it so these are variables that every test has and then the um the framework has a bunch of mocks and one of the mocks set up is one that will um capture a message that's sent right here. Uh, there. So the test framework has a bunch of facilities set up to um, capture messages that the unit under test, which is server, is going to send out to the fake followers. All right, so we're going to look at them. And then basically, if the message sent Duh. I had to spell it correctly. Receiver is 12. Then we're going to do a couple things, right? We're going to say that we received it. Then we're going to check. We need to make sure the next, at the, um, yeah, so it's the message sent dot message dot type if Oh, it's okay. It's it's a combination of these two things. If the type is message, is it message info? Yeah, message info. No, message type. So it's raft message type append entries. If it's an append entries and it is sent to 12, then we can also check message sent well expect equal two we expect two for the next index because there's one in the log already right no it'll be one in this case it's one because it's not been committed yet right they all default to that right the default i was just looking at that Match index, which will be zero. Uh, no, that's not where it's initialized. Last will be zero, so plus one will be one. It'll be one. Expect one for message sent dot message dot append entries dot previous 
No, the previous is right. The previous is one minus. So that's what we expect. And I think the problem is we're going to get garbage instead. Pretty sure. Yeah. Let's see. Hey there, Mr. Muffles. Shout out to Mr. Muffles. He's another fellow streamer we have on Twitch. You had a stream last night and I missed it? Shoot. I'll have to watch the VOD. I miss you, Mr. Muffles. I, you haven't, um, I haven't seen your stream in a while. Mr. Muffles works on a Unity-based game. It's like a Metroidvania. He's got a smooth voice, so check out his stream. How are you doing? Besides, how, was, how did the Nocturnal stream go? 4 a.m. Dude, I'm, a, I'm dead asleep at that, at that hour. I'm, I'm really happy that you're streaming again, because I haven't seen you stream in a long time, and I was getting worried that something, something was going on. So how did it go? Starting this week? Awesome. Looking forward to it. You guys should check out his stream. You'll learn a thing or two about Unity and about game design, which is why I watch his stream and many others. I'm trying to pick up as much as I can about actual game design and game code because that's that's going to be new for me. All right, so this should fail, right? This is the bug. I'm trying to repro a bug in Raft. And it's not reproing. <laughs> um, that should have. Let's see what happens when. What's that, let's actually look at that message. Send correct heartbeat. So debug. What does the message look like? Yeah. So there's a bug in the raft which is causing uh, this uh, strangeness here. We're we're trying to add a server like server thirteen to the mix here, and what what we're getting is. 13 is saying, I don't have the log yet, and the leader is just never sending it. It's like, it's not sending it, and here's the worst part. It's sending the cor the incorrect next index. That should be a, a 1 at least, if not a 2. It's just not initialized, and so I'm trying to repro that bug. I thought it would show up here as the previous log index is wrong, but apparently not. Hmm. Oh, wait a, wait a minute. Uh, yeah, 12, right? Can I... I guess I can put a breakpoint earlier and see what happens when this is appended. Yeah. Rewind. Go in. And then go in. Hold on, wait a second, I'm missing something. I think this is not a valid use case. It's just blindly appending it. And really it needs it needs to enter here, doesn't it? That's an external method. Yeah, when is apply configuration called? That's the that's the thing. When does that get called? When oh okay, so yeah, it's I, I should see that in a moment. I just didn't go far enough. When we set the last index, basically. Now it'll look at it. It'll see it's that, and it'll apply the new configuration. So here's the existing one. It's got 256711. Then the new one, 256711 and 12. So it should add 12 to the mix. And here's probably where I would fix the bug, is I need to actually um, 
initialize the, the new guys. So on set, it's going to figure out that it's still a voting member. Yes. Oh, it's removing old old servers. It won't do any of that. And then start... Right. So it's going to check to see if things have started up yet. They have not. Right. So exit out of that. Oh, wait a minute. Is that the problem? Um, let, me, let me redo this. Breakpoint there. Restart. Go. And go into that. Okay, so yeah, it, it doesn't decide... It doesn't actually send the heartbeats here yet. It'll be here. Oh, I'm not testing this right. <laughs> so the test is to see that it received that. It will receive it. But the problem is that when we respond back fail, it won't retransmit correctly. Okay, so yeah. I, I, I just didn't set up the test right. So you had a casual stream to start back up. I'll, have to, I'll watch your VOD after I'm done just to um get my Mr. Muffles fix. So when are you going to stream again? Like, tomorrow or today if you're still here all right so we need to respond back yeah so here we'll here we'll reply back false so we need to construct a response i think this is where it was uh yeah, so this is where we could construct typical response. So we don't need to do this stuff here, do we? Well, I guess it's safe. It's safe to do that part. We don't need this expectation, though. So we'll send back a results saying, yes, we're in the same term, but success is false. And we'll say, we don't have anything yet. And send that back. It's from 12. RSVP, right? Then we will expect to receive another message, right? So I guess what we'll do is we'll break out immediately. Hold on. Yes, so we, we can we can we can kind of cheat the system here. I can even though we're in, in the middle of iterating it, we can clear it. As long as we don't go back into the loop, we're safe. We just break. And then, um, actually, we can just say assert at this point. And then we would um, process the messages again, and we should see the retransmission. And I should probably, again, use the same trick. Yeah, they do require concentration. It would be better if I refactored this, like, this whole thing could be a helper. Basically, this should be a function like reply false zero <laughs> Rep uh, or send a pen results entry results false zero right i should have a help it would be easier to read the test if i had help more helpers so yeah i'm getting to that point with this it's beyond time beyond due for um, refactoring maybe i should make, make myself a note again the more times i make a note the more likely i'm actually to do it really really need to refactor raft server tests all right new flag new server received retransmission or not retransmission 
log replication. Replicated log? How about just log? And then we'll, um... Eh. Expect. We'll expect it. Okay, so it's if it's that and that. And then we can do the flag, right? Oh, uh, did I remove that by accident? No, I didn't. I left it. Okay, cool. That's this, actually. That's true. Now here we can do the expectation. We should get... Uh, what What's in the append entries? It should go back to uh, previous zero, and uh, the log should actually have something in it, right? So it should be zero for previous. Append entries, previous index, and then we should assert uh, equal one for message, message sent dot message dot log dot size. And then we can expect equal um, this entry, right? Because I have a comparator now for that. Yes. Nice. This will fail, right? Yeah, better. I've been working on this test for a while now. That was this one? No, send correct. Where is it? Send correct. Send correct. This one. Yay! Correctly fails. It didn't receive the log. Okay, so the the fix is that when we apply a configuration and uh, we're building... Where's the right place? Set, maybe? Right, any work required when it changes. So if, where is it? Um, actually, we need to do it before it's changed, right? So before this point. Basically, we gotta go initialize the state for any instances that weren't in the cluster state before. So yeah, I guess we will iterate through. For const auto instance ID in cluster configuration dot instance IDs. Or actually, uh, shouldn't we do it here? The first, the first place we'll see it is for joint. I actually really adjust this test to do a joint. And that's um, new, right? I'll re-verify that this fails. Uh, old, right? Old is that, is just that. That's the new. Why do I have that? That must be a leftover from an old test. Okay, new joint. So let's re-verify that before I change this. Well, that's fine. Leave it the way it is. It should still fail, right? Still fails. For the same reason. Okay, good. Okay, so it's... Not there, but here we want to do it. Because here's where we'll see them for the first time. Yeah, right here. We inserted it, exactly. So we don't want to... Oh, hold on, someone's at the door.
Sorry, that went way too long. Did chat really, uh, oh, shoot, I got raided while I was at the door. You know what it was? It was someone pitching me solar energy. And I kept trying to tell them, dude, I don't want to waste your time, but we're not going to get solar cell solar panels on our roof. The guy was tenacious. He ended up l leaving me with uh, his uh, business card. I'm like, okay, I'll, I'll look. We'll look it up. <laughs> Thanks so much, Iris John. How long was I gone? I wasn't gone that long. Maybe five minutes. You got to listen to my loop for five minutes. <laughs> oh, I'll have to apologize to Iris John later if he's already gone. That um, he he brought you guys in to listen to my silly little um, mute loop. I put that up when the, the dog just goes crazy when someone rings a doorbell and is there. So she was pretty much barking the whole time. Sorry about that. <laughs> All right. Hopefully, hopefully I didn't drive everyone away. But uh, if you're coming from Irish John Gaming and you're wondering what the heck I'm doing, I have some commands here we could always type. And hey there. You're Freedom United. Well, welcome. I'm working on setting up the back-end server infrastructure for a new game. And the game doesn't exist yet. It's going to be a multiplayer game, so I'm setting up servers for it. And I want a server infrastructure that stays up even when I am taking servers down for replacing the code or fixing a bug or if they crash. So I have a lot of background experience in doing networking and multimedia and stuff, so... Uh, I've done this kind of thing before, but never for a game. I'm setting up the stuff to make the game, and then when I actually do game stuff, it's going to be new for me. But this stuff is, I've done before. I, the server end has copies, replicated state, and we're using an algorithm called the Raft Consensus Algorithm, which you can read about more there, to replicate the state between servers. And then as a, a player of the game, you'll connect in through uh, your browser, all the connections are through web sockets, and then there's a special orchestrator in the back that's starting and stopping servers. So today I've been trying to get to where I can add a server to the cluster. Here's my admin console. Um, it starts the change to go from a three server cluster to four. And the problem I'm running into right now that, I, that I'm fixing is that the log is not being replicated to the new server. We keep getting a failure. And the indicator of the bug was when I added this this next index should not be ever be zero because it's a one-based index. So that told me that I did not initialize a variable. And that's where I was just about to fix that when the, uh, the guy for the solar panel company came by to bug me. The server should stay up when I shut down part. I'm sorry. So in simpler terms, if, uh, let's say you're connected to this particular server and that server crashes, you don't want the player to suddenly lose their, their game. So instead, the, um, there'll be other servers available that have exactly the same state. So every time you move in the game, your position will be updated on all servers. So if this were to unexpectedly crash, what the client would do is go connect to a different server and just pick up where it left off. The... Um, the real magic is in the servers where they have to um, talk to each other to um, share the state. So if you tell the server, hey, I want to move one square to the left, what the server has got to do is tell all of its neighbors, hey, we need to have the player move one square to the left. And then once a majority of the servers here say he's moved, then it responds to the client saying, um, okay, you're now here. Then if at any point it crashes, you can connect to another server and... It'll be consistent. The state is consistent. Yeah, actually the solar panel guys, usually it's only once a year, and I usually drive them away real quick by just telling them that my energy bill is pretty low because we don't have uh, air conditioning. This guy was real tenacious. He, uh, he kept me for a good five minutes. Is fresh meat still here? Did I drive him off with my um, with my uh, stupid uh, mute loop? Sorry about that, dude. Anyway, I hope that makes sense now. So to fix this bug, it's coming when when we're applying this. This is called a joint configuration, so it's a transitionary period from going from three to four. So it comes in as this one has three in it, this one has four in it, 
And so we go through and we're inserting entries into this uh, joint configuration. So the additional thing we need to do is we need to look and check if the, uh, actually what we'll do is we'll get a, we'll get a, eh, yeah, if shared uh, instances find this uh, instance ID, if, if it's not found, which is equivalent to the uh, find returning the uh, end iterator. And then we gotta then we gotta create the new record for it. So auto instance is shared instances. So we can reference it. That will create a default record. And here's where I gotta initialize that variable. Next index has to be initialized. Actually, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna just call a function and say initialize instance. Uh, what is this type called? Info. We'll just do that, right? And then we'll make that a function. And we're going to call it from from there and from the place I originally initialized things. So much code and lines. Yeah, well, I didn't show you this diagram. Don't be scared, but the whole server's got to be a bunch of components. Actually, it's the top half that are the real components. The bottom half is really just uh, how I'm breaking down entities in my game. Um, but the top half is the heavy part. The server's main APIs are through a web server, and it you know runs uh, web sockets. And the coordinator is like the message to and from. And there's a journal in which changes to the state are stored in, in a sequence of commands. And the executor takes those commands and applies them to the config to the uh, state. The only state I have now is the configuration object. And so, the, really, the server only has this for now and we're, it doesn't have the game part yet but i'm trying to get this working really well with um changing things on the fly taking a server in and out of the cluster and um, once that's solid i can deploy that to amazon web services and then start adding game stuff to it it'll be fun uh what what was where was i i was here so yeah, if you have any questions about specific things, let me know. But I do have all this stuff in my notebook. And uh, what I might be working on from day to day might be different. So if you don't care about this stuff, but uh, you might be caring about other things I might do in the future, you can always come back to my notebook. I have a plan for each day. I try to uh, announce what I'm going to do on my Discord channel a little bit before. And I give a link to the, the next day's log page. And you can always always search through this. So like, for example, maybe you don't care about server stuff, but maybe you're interested in hash functions. Who knows? Maybe the Twitch messaging interface, right? Um, you can look back at my notes, search through them, and find the stream I did it on, and I archive all these. Okay, the code is on GitHub, but I archive these streams on YouTube. So if you're interested in my code, you can find it on GitHub. If you just want to see where I talked about something more interesting, then it's on YouTube. But feel free to stop me with any specific questions. A lot of frequent questions I have commands for to give you quick answers. If not, then I'll either add a command or I'll just, I'll let you know what the answer is. So I was gonna make a place for that new function, right? Hmm, where to put it? Oh, dog is barking again. I think someone's coming home from school. I think we'll put it here. I forget what I called it. We'll find out what the name is later. Oh, that's what the name is. Initialize instance info. And it ta it took a reference to an instance info, right? And we're gonna, s I like to document these right away. Um, it's actually pretty self obvious, right? Uh, what does it not like about that character? I think that's a stale. I think, yeah, they just needed to catch up there. So, yeah, I hope that's a good dam. <laughs> if it's a bad dam, I'm sorry. Uh, if there, if you're maybe overwhelmed, that's fine. If you got questions, let me know. Most of what you'll see me doing is just low-level C++ code at the moment. When I get actual game running, there'll be a little bit more of a mixture between the game client, which will be in React, 
I can show you all the React done I've done so far is in that admin console, which is pretty rough right now around the edges because I'm new at doing React. Uh, but that that kind of looks like this. We, we I just have the entire a, uh, admin console as a component, and uh, I have got a little stuff to do, dragging and dropping the config file in, and uh, so I can select basically which node in the cluster I want to talk to at any one time. Uh, why does it say disconnected, though? Did I stop? I might have stopped the cluster. Oh, right. Certificate problem. That's because I'm on... Um, I'm using a self-signed certificate. And I didn't I didn't um, make exceptions for 11 and 12. Should probably fix that or move back to Chrome. But anyway, I can, I can kind of see what's going on uh, by just picking a different server I want to talk to, and the React is what I use for that. Stuff like how you do WebSockets, extremely easy in, in React and JavaScript in general. You just use um, this, uh, what is it called? WebSocket class. Set up some listeners for when it opens and closes or when you get a message. And messages are very easy to parse in JavaScript. If it's JSON message, you just do a, um, where did I do it? JSON parse. And sending is just uh, JSON stringify. So I, I, I keep all the messages between servers and clients uh, right now as JSON, J JavaScript simple object notation. Uh, for it's easy to see it in the debugging, and also it's easy to see in the code. Uh, if I need to optimize this, it will still become a more um, serialized binary format, probably. But yeah, I haven't done much in the client yet. You might see me working on this more when I have a game and I'm actually building the user interface. Or you might be seeing me uh, in the game adding content. The goal is to have something running where I'm actively adding content to the game while people can go in and play it. It's going to be interesting. This is way much for you. You'll stick with HTML, PHP. That's cool. I appreciate that. Yeah, right now it's going to be um, uh, Hardcore C++, which is why it's in my stream title, hopefully. Unless I forgot to uh, set it. Yeah, C++. So it might be a little scary. I'm sorry. So set up the uh, initial state for... Uh, for what we track about another server. And here's where I'm going to move the stuff like next index equals this stuff right here. Um, this is exactly what I want to put in there. So here's where I'm going to call shared initial, no, not shared, initialize instance info. I'm going to take that and, and these two lines of code moves into the here. Now we're calling it in two places. Here where we become leader, and then here if we're already leader and a new a server gets added. Actually, I guess we only need to do it if we're leader, right? So, prefix this? Only if we're leader? So we're leader if our state, our election state is leader. Yeah, okay, so I use test-driven development, and I use the Google Test Framework, and if you don't know what those are, I have a half an hour little intro video that talks about it. What I have been doing is I first set up a test case, so it's like a reproducing a bug in this case, or other times it'll be showing how a new feature is used. And I write that first, and so it will fail because the feature doesn't exist or the bug isn't fixed. And then I go into the code and make the bug fix, and I run the test again, and it should pass. So there's the, it was failing before, and I run it again, and still failing. Ah, can't win them all. Uh, I did build, right? So I basically keep trying to fix the bug or complete the feature until the test passes. If I don't get it to pass right away, then I usually will debug it. So here I will... Let us debug it. I'll put a breakpoint here. Tell it to run the test. And, um, okay, instance two is in there. 
instance 5 is in there. It's going to be the new one, right? Um, in this case, it was 12, I think. Here we go. 12. So instances doesn't have 12 in it. That will add it. And then we initialize. Last index is 0. So right. The next index is now a 1. Okay, good. So what? Maybe this isn't running long enough. The error is it is expecting it to receive one, but it's not. Right, because it should receive it when we say we did not get it. So that should be, we should get to here next. Okay, we got to there next. Actually, I went too far, didn't I? Message is sent. There's no, is empty. Okay, I need to rerun the test and go here. Well, hold on. Yeah, we can go there. So that, that part works. We go to there, and then I want to see what happens when we receive that message. So on receive results, let's go to there. So what's happening? Term 6, current term 6, that's good. We are the leader, yes. It did not succeed. The index was, oh, right. Oh, wait a minute. Was that correct? Oh, wait a minute. So this is the bug. So the bug is in two places then. We didn't initialize. So basically it was zero before. Now it's one, but then there's the, it's not going. It should always call that. It should just, yeah, I, I think I know how to fix this. It should always attempt replication, but it should only decrement it if it's greater than one. It's a one-based index, basically. That should fix it, right? No? Come on, you're killing me. Okay, let's try this again. Uh, we'll go there and we'll just rerun the test again. And then go. Oh, this happens multiple times. Go. Then here, okay, so we don't advance. So what, what do we do when we re attempt to replicate it to, this should be 12, yeah. Oh, look at that. We ignored it because it's not in our, cluster config. Well, shoot, that's wrong. We need to replicate it to everyone. So why is that checked there? Oh, I think that's to, to not try to replicate to servers that have left. But for ones that are new, we do want to accept it. Okay, so that Okay, that that means the bug was in three places. So it has to be that that's true and it's not in the new config. This is too long, isn't it? Should I shorten that? Like this? I like to, I like to get it to fit on one screen. Uh, so it's the cluster, what do I call it, next? It's, uh, what did I call it, next? Next cluster configuration. It's only if it's not in both. You're right. Let's try that. Green is good, but let's run them all. This is why I have a test suite. We can run all the tests to make sure that change I made did not break anything else. Oh, it broke something. Do not retry for misbehaving follower when not does does not even accept empty log. Wait a minute, but the log is hold on. It's misbehaving. <laughs> okay, uh, remove breakpoints, please. Thirty nine thirty eight. Okay. It's not misbehaving. It's not that it didn't accept it. Hmm. 
Oh, oh, okay. This has to be further that we only do this if there is a log at all. Got it. So hold on. how am I going to do this? Wait a second. I think this is not a, this this is an invalid test case because they're not really dis, they're not really misbehaving. We don't know if they misbehaved or not. They're simply saying they didn't get the last log and they last it didn't match anything. I think this test is not valid anymore. I'm going to declare it invalid and delete it. So don't 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 do that with uh don't be quick to ever don't ever be quick to do that. You have to really think that is this use case valid anymore and I'm I convinced myself it's not. All right, good. We're all green all across the board, right? Everything works. So then I can reattempt to run this in the real cluster. Okay, let's do this. So nuke, what was there before? Stage and serve the new cluster. Okay. So we have a three... A three server cluster. Ready? Let's tell it to upload the new config with four in it. Ooh, that got a lot further than it did before. Let's let's see what it did. Actually, did it work? I think it worked. Look at that. We have a four server cluster now. So the first thing we do is we, um, where is it? It's actually not printing everything, is it? Actually, I expected. Oh, right from, right. Actually, how come I'm seeing it there? Oh, interesting. I didn't exp. Oh, that's a side effect. It's processing. It's processing the journal. But it didn't. But it didn't. It didn't see all the journal. Hold on. Anyway, uh, let's, let's let me read this. So we sent the start reconfiguration. It replicated it to twelve. Then uh, I guess twelve responded yes, so we accepted it. So it then said okay. We're, we've officially begun reconfiguration, so we're changing from 3 to 4. Then it connects to the new one, which the orchestrator has faithfully started for us at this point. It launched it. It replicated that entry to 13, and then it got back a response success, and so it said, okay, we're, we're ready to apply joint config. It that was committed, so then it was applying the new config. It sent it as a single config to everyone. That got committed, and so we sent the finished to all four. Actually, how come it's only sending this to three of them? Oh, uh, wait a minute, hold on. Problem is, it's not actually saying who it's sending it to. I need to put that into the log, shouldn't I? It says it's sending it, but it doesn't say who it's sending it to. So it's hard for me to read this. Hey there, Frost Ice Cold. Set an interview for an internship today. They want to develop software for payment terminals in Java C++ 98. No! 98. That's the old stuff. What are they doing? <laughs> C++ 11 is the minimum now <laughs> it should be 
I'm sorry, dude. Well, you could like you could pretend that you uh, can do C plus plus ninety eight and just secretly do C plus plus eleven. Java and C sharp are really basically the same language. Only one's made by Oracle or Sun, depending on your historian, and then C sharp is Microsoft. Basically the same language, though. Some people will think of the runtime and as part of the language, which is not really the case. Sort of is, but not really. So don't. Uh, when I say C sharp, I don't mean .NET. I just mean the language. Language is pretty close. All right. So anyway, I think this is good. Right, so here, 13 got all three entries. It was changed, and then looks like it had to retry a bunch of times. Interesting that it had to retry so many times. I wonder if server 13 took a while to start up. If I go to 13 and look at his log, what do I see? Oh, we don't need a zero there. Um, oh. It was, okay, we don't know what happened. The log was huge. A lot of heartbeat messages sent. It looks like it's in the cluster, though. Wait a minute, uh, what's happening to 11 and 12? Oh, when I, okay, 13 became the leader. Interesting. When did that happen? <laughs> at some point, I'm, oh, look at this. Leadership changes were happening. I think it's happening because the, the election timeout is too short for my um, debugging mode. I have these built unoptimized, and so... What happens is that if uh, if a server doesn't hear from the leader within a timeout, it just says, leader's dead, let's start a new election. It looks like that happened a bunch of times. But the cool thing is that 13 participated in it. I bet if I look at the uh, log, I will see everything looks good now. So I can look at the raw state of the game by looking at the runtime files here. And any of these instances will have these uh, replicated journal in it now which is cool. So there are four entries in the journal. And they all have the new... Oh, that's the old configuration. What happened? It didn't get saved? This one has the new. I can tell because I forgot to pretty print this one. This one's got the new. Looks like server 13 doesn't have the new config, though. It's got the old one still. That's not good. It should have replicated this new configuration, the one that was in here. Hmm. I have to look into that. That's a bug. Let me write that down. So, bug. Adding server. New server doesn't end up with latest configuration in, in persistence storage. It's probably in its memory, because that's how it actually works. Uh, but for some reason, the executor didn't save it. It only has the old one there. Not good. So if I stop the... Uh, if I kill the server and restart it, it'll start up uh, kind of broken, because it won't find itself in the configuration. I need to fix that. All right. Everything else looks good. Yeah, this doesn't have the latest config in it somehow. Weird. These do, though. All four of them. Those ones were successfully replicated. It has 13 in there. It's just 13 doesn't have its own file in there. Huh. I should fix the uh, serialization problem. That's in the executor. It's not really a bug. 
I'm just gonna I'm just gonna fix it and not not worry about the unit test for it because it's really just for um convenience of reading. Where is that executor? Templates have been in there for since C plus plus ninety eight, but it uh, they they worked kind of differently. There's a lot of things that were different. How's the project? You got a big increment these days. The uh, project, I guess, is going okay. I I kind of worry that people come in and I might this might be way 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 over their head because it, it is sort of a complicated piece of machinery. Um, I'm hoping that once I get through this, these uh these big four, the coordinator, raft, executor, and journal. Once these are done, then I'll be able, be able to focus mostly on a uh, game state, and then it won't look nearly so complicated. It's this is really complicated because I have this server cluster with the with the uh, fault tolerant stuff in it. Yeah, well, I'm hoping to get through this. I, I need it to be working solid, and then I have a, a nice base that I can kind of put aside saying, if you really want to look at it, it's it's a, it's a an excellent but complicated machine, uh, but we're going to move on to game stuff. <laughs> Is it this? I think it's this. It's this two encoding. Uh... In the, um, where do we do the pretty printing? One of these I did pretty printing in. I'll just steal it. Um, gosh, I don't remember where it was. Ah, here it was. So this is the orchestrator. When the orchestrator writes configuration files, it pretties them up. So let's, let's use that here there we go okay take care of frost ice cold have fun you have fun too all right let's try this again so nuke stage start serve i mean okay back to three and now we're gonna add a fourth again so we can't talk to 13 yet. It doesn't exist. So we go to 10. It's the leader. Upload the new config. Done. That was simple. So actually, wait a minute. Yeah, they all got their config changed twice, right? Uh, the joined config and then the single config when it's done. And then, yeah, there we go. 13 starts up. Says, hey, I'm talking to 10 now. He's a leader. I get the config change myself. I start. I re I'm done. Cool. Total system crashes. You know what that was? My system was crashing a lot because and it was frustrating, which is why I made that counter to sort of add some humor to the frustration. Oh, thanks for the follow. Hey, Juggets. So I added that statistic in there be to add some humor to the situation. It was actually kind of stressful because i would be in the debugger in Visual Studio. This is even before I was using VS Code. And it would just, my computer would just poof, blue screen. Blue screen to death. It turned out to be a firmware, an old firmware. Uh, the firmware was too old to support the CPU I was using. Updated the firmware, never seen the problem again. And it, I had, it actually ruined my SSD. It corrupted it. Um, I had to get a new SSD. So a new SSD plus firmware upgrade, problem gone. I know it wasn't the SSD, though, because it happened one more time between when I repaired, got a new SSD and then fixed the firmware on the motherboard. Yeah, it was scary. Uh, now I've learned my lesson. I always make sure that uh, when, you, when you make a new rig, to make sure that you update to the latest um, stable version of the uh, BIOS, or what do they call it now, UFI firmware for the motherboard. All right, I was going to test this, right? So uh, I was going to look at the state files. They should all be nice and pretty, and they're not. <laughs> Oops. They're not pretty at all. That one is, but that's wrong. Okay, so I screwed up. 
This was supposed to pretty it. Gosh darn it. And re-encode. Is this not being called, maybe? How about... Is two encoding called more than one place? Oh, look, it is. That's the problem. Why am I doing that? Should I just be using this? Yeah, that would make more sense, wouldn't it? So I should be doing that with this. Command configuration, right? Wouldn't that make more sense? I don't know why I had that in there. There we go. And where else do we do it to encode? That's, okay, that's the only place. Okay, cool. That was a problem. I was doing it from two places. Now it's only one. So nuke. Nuke just does an rm dash rf all. Uh, the equivalent in DOS, which or Windows, which is rm dir slash s slash q, if it exists, and then uh, stage and serve on the inline brace team. Oh yeah, I do the uh, new line end brace. So does that mean I like appeal to both? to both uh, camps. <laughs> Doesn't matter to you anymore? Yeah. I don't mind looking at other people's code as long as their style is consistent. It's when people are inconsistent that it starts to bug me. Uh, okay, we're going to try again, right? So, upload. What could go wrong? Look at that, it changes. It's so sweet that it actually works. I just want it to be pretty now. 10... Oh, look how pretty that is. And we have 13. So that maybe maybe next I need to find out why does 13 have an old config file? Because it should have written it. Oh, now it's new. Is this a race condition of some kind? Possibly. That actually might be it. I think it might be related to something on my to-do list that I had today which was that only a message is sent to the coordinate to the orchestrator from the leader. I think the problem is the new server is coming up and telling the orchestrator, hey, three servers, man. And the orchestrator says, okay, I'll write down three servers for you. Actually, that doesn't make sense. I, I think I have to track, track this a little bit more. Um, get it to reproduce, so... Nuke stage serve. Do it again. And then look at the file. It always closes it because I always nuke it. Okay. Actually, I wonder if it has to do with keeping it open in VS Code. That might be a problem. Let me close everything. Nuke, stage, serve. I should when I stage. I should just hide those. By the way, um, I don't really need to see that. Actually, you know what? I'm just gonna have an uh, just because I feel like it. I'm gonna make another one called Do It. W is for Windows, so it would be uh, how do you do this? It's like call. Is that how you do it? Um, actually, I do want to see those results, though. Do it. There we go. I like it. Let's do it. And then... Um, can I just say open recent? It doesn't really remember, does it? It only remembers what I told it to open explicitly. Anyway, it's build, orchestrator, name of the realm, 13, config. Okay, here, I've reproduced it. It somehow does not have the new config. It has the old one in it. Oh, it has the new config. Does that mean the journal's not? The journal's up to date, but somehow the executor didn't process this command. It didn't process that command. Why? I don't know. Is it because the term number's wrong? This term one. 
But we're actually in term six. How did we get in term six? Wait a minute. The term number's wrong. Why does it say one? Why is this saying... Actually, no, why is it saying six? How did we get to... How do we get to term six? And how did 12 become the leader? Oh, do we have timeouts during reconfiguration? That's probably why it's screwed up. It's a corner case. Okay, so it, I think the bug is happening when we when we have a, a re-election during reconfiguration. I like how that rolls off the tongue. Re-election during reconfiguration. So I want to see it when the term number doesn't change. It didn't change, so we should be good, right? Yes. So I think that's what the bug is. It's the corner case where um, we have a leadership change during this handoff. You know, oh, corner case, am I using it too much? Yeah, it means a, uh, a scenario that doesn't happen usually. You love it? Cool. Hey, hey, look, this is cool. Uh, we're able to add servers, and if I, if I wanted, I can actually remove it again, right? Will this work? Let's see. Let's just do it live. So uh, we'll just we'll just up re-upload the original configuration. So I'll go to config and pick out the old config, and then say, hey, let's let's go back to the old config because you know that's server thirteen. He's he's a real moron. So upload the new config, and look at that. It killed thirteen, no longer in cluster, and we're back to three servers. That is sweet. So without touching the server console at all, so it could be running on AWS or Azure or Google Cloud or whatever, from this command console, I can just simply add or remove a server now. As long as there's no leadership change. That's the corner case stuff I need to get into next. I'm running out of time, though. I usually only stream for about four hours a day, and I think I'm past four hours now. Yeah, I think I need to I need to handle these corner cases, but I think I need to to do it on Monday. I'm happy I at least got this much done. Thanks for the follow, Tiger Cun. So that took a lot longer than I thought. That took four hours, mostly because of a bunch of bugs I found. So Monday I'm going to do a bunch of cleanup, which uh, are things that I noticed that aren't quite bugs, but really should be done differently. And then there's a bunch of corner cases to handle. Corner cases are going to get fun because we actually have to like trigger an election during a reconfiguration, or like kill servers while they're while they're changing state. And it's going to be it's going to be interesting. Tiger coon. Is that what that is? Oh, I'm I'm glad that you like this. T juggets. I hope I'm saying that right. Can't wait until I get to the rendering? Rendering. You mean like... Uh, what I want to get to is I want to I make this look nicer. Part of the cleanup, I think, will be to clean up my diagnostics because I guess this is what I want to see, but this is sort of chaotic. I, I want to clean this up a little bit so it's more obvious what's going on. I should be able to look at th all of this and say, oh, we just added a server, right? And I should be able to look at, oh no, this is where we removed it. Here's where we added it, right? The queue, the queue is this part. 13 is in the new set, right? And then this is where we removed a server. Two queues here, we see that, and then we see it was killed. So I'll do, I need to do things like, like these colon threes are like the log level. So I'd like to go through and um, if I like raise this one to level four or reduce these other ones to two, then what I can do is set the level so that only that and that show up. That's what I kind of want to see. All this stuff is like gory details that I only really want to see if something malfunctioned, really. So that's part of the cleanup, I think. Cleaning up the log, cleaning up some um, 
some of the things that I saw earlier and then the corner cases. So this will be all on Monday, I think. And then this, I need to review this stuff. This might result in more work. So I'm going to check it in. And uh, did I change anything in raft? I did. There were some raft bugs, weren't there? The raft bugs were, we weren't sending heartbeats correctly to new servers. And then there was what, another one down here? Oh, that was a test that's no longer valid. Yeah. So yeah, Raft had a bug where we added a new server into the cluster. Right here we added 12. And it was not getting uh, the log replicated correctly. The heartbeat was not, it wasn't responding to the to the um, failure to uh, f to receive the heartbeat. It should have, the expectation is that we actually receive the log again. That we actually get the uh, first entry in the log. So that's what we fixed. And that fix was we needed to initialize the instance information from two places. Here's the new, no, what was this? Oh, this was a different bug. No, same bug, but different aspect of it. So we had to initialize it. We had to replicate to, we had to specifically allow, right, we had to allow replicating to new servers. And then um, this was refactoring. Yeah, and then we had to um, actually do the initialization for new instance information. Cool. What was this? Oh, this is more diagnostics. I just wanted to uh, print out the uh, the next index number. Oh, thanks for the follow, Callus Fury. Callus Fury, I like it. What's this here? Oh, do we still need to do that? I wonder if I... Is that actually necessary? What happens if I remove that? Let me see. Sometimes when you're not sure, like, if something was done by accident, what you can do when you're doing TDD is just, uh, just, uh, just remove it or undo it and then run your tests again. And then, then you learn from which tests fail, like, the reason why you had to do it. So what, what if I put that back to the way it was, which is this... Rebuild that and then run the test, and then if it passes, I don't need to do it. If it fails, I'll know why. Why is it needed? It is needed. Why? To send the correct heartbeat to new servers once the joint configuration is applied. Oh, right. Because the first message sent is a heartbeat, it'll fail, but the next index will have been 1, not greater than one, so it needs to just do, do that all the time. That's why. All right. Convince myself about why I need that. All right. Good, 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 good. So that's all stageable, right? Stage it all. Commit. Server. Fix issues. Uh, replicating log to new servers. It was multi, it's multi uh, part, right? fix the initialization or correct correctly initialize instance or really instance and server are like the same thing instance information for for new instances uh, okay what was the other one oh right allow log replication to new instances and right always try to replicate the log even if the next index is one and is that it i can uh, close that it won't lose it i can go look through here and make sure that was it initialize yeah that yes oh right initialize it on when we add it oh no i already put that in there didn't i Okay, there is some extra logging stuff. Yes. Extra logging. Add uh, log. Include next index in diagnostic logs about append entries. How do you keep all the network stuff unit testable? I can show you. I do have an abstraction. I can sh I'll show you in a second. 
commit that, right? So one thing, by the way, um, you guys aren't plebes and plebe coders or anything like that. It it can act, it actually goes both ways. It could be that the code I'm writing is a little bit more complicated than you can grasp, but then what I actually suspect might be happening is my code is not clean enough. Uh, this is definitely not clean. This is too long. This is a sign I need to refactor this. This is horrible, actually. This is the worst part of the raft stuff. My goal would be to refactor, in other words, clean up the code well enough so that anyone reading the code, even if they don't really know much C++, they can at least get the gist of what's going on. If you can't get the gist of this, then it's not your fault. It's probably mine. So how do I how do I test how do I test the network stuff? I have abstracted away all the network stuff. I have a library called system abstractions where I abstract away things that are different between like Windows, Linux, and o and um, Mac OS. And so one of the abstractions I've defined is called the network connection. And so you can do things like connect. And right now it just supports IPv4. So you give the address and port number. You can um, do processing, which is you basically have all of the sending and receiving and detecting of broken connections done in the background, and you get callbacks when they happen. So message received delegate is called back. You receive any bytes that come in. Just you get a callback for it. You don't have to call receive. You just, you just get it. And you also get a, another function that gets called for you if the connection gets broken. So that's kind of nice. A worker thread gets spawned to do all that for you. And then there's like you can get what address the other guy is, what his port number is, whether or not you're still connected, getting your own address and port number is sometimes useful. And here's how you actually send bytes or how you close the connection. So this is, is an abstraction so that whether we're using WinSock or BSD sockets or something else, the uh, code you write on top doesn't care. And then how it's implemented would be a different between OSs. So there is a subdirectory under the implementation for Linux. Mock, which is the, I think it's, that's the code name for the kernel in the Mac OS. POSIX, so that's Linux or other Unixes, and then Windows. So like for example, Windows network connection, Win32, has all the WinSOC stuff in it, right? You include the WinSOC headers, and then let's say send message, for example. Uh, or send message. Send message really just puts the message onto a queue and sends a, send, sets an event that it, the worker thread handles by uh, in the processor, which is the pro the worker thread for process. Where if you have put something in the queue to be sent, and again this is needs to be refactored. Here's where it looks in the output queue if it's that there's something in there. It'll try to write by calling the send function which is different between Windows and BSD sockets because on Windows Ascend, you, it's a capital S-O-C-K-E-T because we shout our sockets in Windows. <laughs> and the errors are different, right? There's W-S-A-E would block. So it's slightly different, right? So you can imagine for POSIX and for Mock or Linux, there's uh, somewhere there's an equivalent of this, but for BSD sockets. And the way it's tested... It's a little bit interesting, so I l have one thing le uh, test another, I think. I think in network connection, I, le I let network endpoint use that for testing. So, for example, let's pick a simple test. Establishing a connection, right? Okay, maybe not so simple. Okay, this is maybe not the greatest example, but uh, all of this is just to set up a server a server being just a network endpoint, which is yet another abstraction. So I'll, I would first test network endpoint and then use it to test network connection. The test is actually this. You um, try to connect to it, and then you expect that you receive, what is this? You, the server expects to receive a connection, right? And then once it is connected, you just check that the uh, port numbers are correct, that it is connected, and that... Um, so that's just connection, and then to send a message, you would imagine, 
like as as you could imagine, you actually t just say send it, and then you on the other end you wait for it to arrive, and you check to make sure it matches. And network endpoint is like network connection, only it's a server side socket. And you guys know what server side sockets are, right? It's not too much different than a than a connect and send. It is a listen. Ah, uh, that's endpoint. Listen and accept. You set up a socket the same way, right? You uh, you bind. Where do I have bind? It's complicated because there are different kinds of sockets, but you, you'll find this code if you search for like how to how do you open a network connection in C or in C, right? You, you call socket, and then at some point you're going to call bind. Maybe some sock options, right? Call bind. And then, um, yeah, if it's a server, it's listen. And then um, instead of calling read, you call accept, which is down here somewhere. Yeah, right, accept. And if accept gives you something, then what it's giving you is the um, connection. Yeah, I, I have a feeling that I didn't give you a very good answer because it's pretty complicated. But uh, suffice to say is uh, you um, you have to have two ends. To test any kind of network stuff, you have to have two ends, a server and a client. So what I've done for the client stuff is I leverage the server object. The server's tests, I think what I just did is I, um, I had to do it differently. I think it looks pretty gross. Uh, network endpoint tests. Yeah, so in... There's nothing to test it with, so I have um, a lot of if def windows. Uh, otherwise, it's POSIX. I have that sprinkled everywhere in the test code. It looks kind of ugly. So yeah, to test a server, you have to have a client. So uh, the client is just hard-coded uh, uh, network stuff. Where send, the sender, the type of sender is either a... Um, Actually, I guess I'm leveraging auto. It's either a capital socket or it's an int based on the OS, right? And there, I guess it's, I guess this is all you really need to do. You need to undef some things. Uh, what was it? The address length type is different. The IP ad v4 address and the socket address is different. There's some whatever differences you use. I use macros to um, cover them up. You mentioned that you have to handle a huge amount of different kind of messages via the socket. Uh, yeah, but from this level, like it's just it doesn't care what the content is. It's just bytes, right? If the interface again, I go back to this, the interface is just a vector of bytes. It doesn't care about the kinds of messages. We just test can bytes get through. When we send some bytes, do we get the same bytes on the other end? And then. Because network networking is about a stack of protocols, if you test each level of the stack separately, it becomes much easier. So if this just tests sockets. I have another component to test HTTP. It doesn't care about um, sockets at all. It actually mocks the entire co connection. So it's a bit mock basically is you pretend that it is a connection, but it's really not. It's just uh, make-believe. So its version of send is to just put it into a uh, into a queue and then and then notify a condition ver condition variable. So that's HTTP, and then on top of that, I use WebSockets. So WebSockets has its own tests where it doesn't care about an HTTP connection. So we have a mock HTTP connection, and then just you stack them up as you go. In the real network stack, from the metal to the top, I think there's what eight, seven or eight layers. But really, uh, most C++ with networking, you only care from the socket layer up. So socket, and on top of that would, might be HTTP, and on top of that would might be WebSocket, and that's about it. For me, for my server right now, it's just three a three-layered network stack. So that's it. I, I know that was a huge digression, but I kind of like talking about that stuff, and... This should remind me that I really need to go back and refactor more because, my God, this code sucks. <laughs> the biggest thing I could do to improve this is to just break it up into functions. And you can kind of see what, I, what you do by collapsing. Look at that. 
So if I made the body of the while another function, the this outer function be becomes only what seven lines long. So so that we that would be one step, and then inside here, what would we refactor? Probably this if, because look what happens when I collapse all these ifs. Now it becomes more readable, right? These are just different paths depending on whether the endpoint is for connections or datagrams, right? So if it's the connection case, uh, we just you just collapse by these outlines gives you a sense of where you would refactor. There, if I needed to, I would just have two two functions to call. One if the accept fails, the other one if it succeeds. So a lot of refactoring is just splitting up functions into uh, many smaller functions. And uh, a lot of the times you can just do it. Other times it gets complicated because you have to end up uh, passing in local variables as parameters to, to these inner functions. You just have to try to kind of be smart about it and um, minimize the number of uh, variables that have to be shared between functions. That's your That's your best bet. All right. I had fun talking about that. I hope it wasn't too much of a digression. Uh, the Epic Unknown, that's, pro that's a very good idea. Separate test suites for each OS. I guess the downside is, is there a downside? There might be some repetition. So you could, but you could be smart about that by using uh, common, like you could have test common, a fourth thing, and then the test Linux would only have the things that are Linux specific, and test common would have the things that are common. Doing laundry in case I decide to end the stream. Oh. Are you going to be streaming soon, Mr. Muffles? I could host you. Or are you going to go later? I am going to wrap up very soon. I'm, I'm like half an hour over. Let me know, because I will, um, I'll host you if you're going to, if you're going to stream. Otherwise, I gotta pick someone else. All right, so I hope you enjoyed today. I'm going to be if 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 you want to know whether or not this is something you want to watch tomorrow, I'll be doing a bunch of cleanup of the uh, things that I saw that are that are not stopping the reconfiguration from happening. This stuff, this is working, but it needs to be cleaned up. Diagnostic messages definitely need to be need to be cleaned up. And some of the side effects that I have noted here need to be cleaned up. And the bigger thing is these corner cases. Like right now, this only works if there's no leadership change in the cluster during this whole process, which happens... Uh, how long does this take? It takes about a quarter second. So during that one quarter of a second, if we have a leadership change in the cluster, it kind of goes to crap. So... I'll be working on trying to, like, it's going to be tough, but we'll have to arrange test cases that actually do that and then um, illustrate that there's a bug and then fix them. So if if this is not your thing, that's that's cool. You can either just kind of browse through the uh, different streams and, um, you know, wait until I have a plan put together for something that does look interesting, or um, there's lots of different streamers out there. I have... I'm fine if you guys guys don't like this. There's lots of stuff you could watch. And I don't want to force you to watch something you hate. So, If you're interested in like when I'm going to actually make this into a real game, it's probably not going to be a month. It's not going to be until another month. So I would say check out my stream again in uh second week of February. I'll probably be doing game, more game stuff. But... Uh, for now, I still got to flesh out some things here. It's, I'm, I'm going to give myself a month until I get to the game stuff. So that's about it. My schedule, if you're interested, is so I'll be streaming again on Monday, 10 a.m. Pacific. PST, GMT minus 8. In the meantime, I got a Discord, if I could type, that you can uh, you can go chat there if you want. Not It's kind of empty right now, but at least there's an announcements channel that I post to if you want to get uh, if you want to know when I'm about to stream. And that'll be it. Um, let's see who's going. Mr. Ruffles, are you going to be streaming, or are you doing laundry? I don't see Mr. Muffles streaming. Well, watch Mr. Muffles later. Again, if you're just joining. Uh, 
come on shout out there we go shout out to mr muffles he's making a game in unity with uh like a metro metroidvania style game and i'm looking forward to watching his stream later when he when he does it in the meantime let's host someone else I think I've hosted everyone in my set, so maybe I start over. I might do Mike, but he's on break right now. I guess I can pass you guys back to Adam. Let's see what he's doing. I guess he's back from lunch. Okay, so pretty much what I would like to be, what my what my goal as a streamer is and as a game dev is to be is to be like this guy, Adam. Is working on a game. It's all in JavaScript. It's a strategy game where you uh, program bots to fight each other. And uh, we'll go. We'll go host Adam. A great streamer. I'm learning a lot from him. He's uh, he's uh, really streamlined the process. His stream is really entertaining, and he shows a lot of tips on coding in general. But his is not C++. It's all in JavaScript, so it's a bit different. So anyway, until next time, I uh, will see you guys later. And just let me get this set up. I, I don't have, I, I want to automate this a, a bit better, but I don't have like a really fast, convenient way to set up the hosting. But I'm doing it right now. I just need to type in the right stuff here. Okay, I'm ready to go. So I will see you guys later.